The wheels are ready to roll. The concern, the tension building for 500 danger-filled miles. Jeff Burton succeeded in the first 500-miler on this track. Mark Martin claimed the second 500 here. And last year, Texas Terry Labonte administered a Texas whipping to the elite of NASCAR. In the last three years, this race has been for many a matter of survival. The question, who will survive to claim the 500 miler today in Texas? It is the lull before the storm, the quiet time, before all that pent-up power and energy is directed onto this mile-and-a-half track for the DirecTV 500. Winston Cup stock car racing returning to Texas. And there you see the starting field on pit road, 43 strong for $4 million, about to unroll in all of its passionate glory and action. Let's go trackside right now. Hello, everyone. Ken Squire with you. We're just about there, just about ready for that command to get this race underway. But for a moment, we'll spend it with Dick Bergren and one of the all-time favorites here in Texas. Terry Labonte owns all the records here at Texas Motor Speedway. Fastest qualifying lap, fastest race ever run here. He's led more laps than anybody else. What do you got for him today, Terry? Well, I don't know. You know, it rained yesterday, and uh, I just hope our setup is close. And, uh, we feel like we won't be too far off. We'll just have to make the right adjustments. Try to be right at the end. Oh, good luck to you today. Let's go to Ralph Shaheen. A week ago, Rusty Wallace reached an amazing milestone in his racing career, his 50th Winston Cup win. But you did that on a half mile in Bristol, Tennessee. Today, a treacherous mile and a half. What are the keys to victory here? Well, you got to have a great handle of the race car for number one and good pit stops. Last year, we finished fourth and had a great car at the end of the race. Yesterday morning in practice, we were super good. So I'm real confident for today's race. Again, Rusty will start 19th today. And he will be coming in strong after that great run he had at Bristol, Tennessee to win number 50. Well, we're just about there. Getting down in the count, getting ready to fire them up here. But let's for a moment go topside and meet the guys who will be making the call for you. A 50-time winner, Ned Jarrett's with Buddy Baker. And here's Mike Joy. Thanks, Ken, and hello, everyone. Welcome to what they proclaim on T-shirts to be the asphalt frontier here at Texas Motor Speedway. Well, Rusty Wallace is the 10th NASCAR driver to hit the 50 mark. 50 victories. Ned Jarrett has 50, as does Junior Johnson. And look at the bottom line, however. Uh, Rusty's, uh, oh, about 22, 21 and three-quarter million ahead of Ned. But there's one thing Rusty doesn't have with all that money, and that's his own Wheaties box. Ned Jarrett's one of four NASCAR legends to be so honored, joining other sport greats. You'll be able to pick that one up in your local grocery store later on this year. Well, Ned, so much for breakfast. How about today's race? Well, it'll be interesting, Mike, as has already been alluded to. Their last practice was rained out last night. What they normally call happy hour, the most important practice session, they didn't get the run. They practiced yesterday morning, but a lot has happened since then. They ran the 300-mile bush race in and out of the showers, and, of course, it's rained since that race. And so they don't really know what the setup of the race cars will be. Most of them have built a lot of adjustments into the cars that they can adjust on it during the race today. Well, if you look at this track from the helicopter, it looks much like Atlanta or Charlotte. Same shape, pretty much the same size. But, Buddy Baker, what's it look like from through the windshield? <laughs> it's totally different, believe me. This racetrack is one of those racetracks that when you really start in there and, and get going, hey, it's a different animal, totally. Well, Fritos will take you inside racing, and Buddy will take you for a lap around Texas Motor Speedway. Well, let's just go right out of the pit road into turn one. Preferred line right on the bottom. As you sweep out of the turn, right up against the wall. 195 or better down the back straightaway in the tricky third turn. This is the turn you have to watch for. You come out right against the wall. Double dog leg down the front straightaway and back into turn one. 
getting set to go as we're just minutes away from the command. 43 riders will take on the asphalt frontier here in Texas. CBS Sports coverage of the DirecTV 500 is sponsored by DirecTV. What are you looking at? Haviland, add more life to your car. And by Ford Outfitters, no boundaries. Whether it's a dirt track in the Dakotas or here on this giant Texas Motor Speedway, here are the words that will raise the hair on the back of your head. Please welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, the Grand Marshal of today's DirecTV 500, Mr. Larry Latham, with those most famous words in motorsports. Gentlemen, start your engine! The power is turned up. We're ready to go racing. Now look at the starting lineup and the green flag next. Flying high above Texas Motor Speedway. Now this is the way to get to the racetrack. Providing aerial pictures for you today. The Bud One Airship Budweiser official beer of NASCAR. Let's have a look at our ranchhead.com starting grid for today's 500 miler. 26 career pole for Terry Labonte, the defending champ of this race, and Kevin LePage has his second front row start this year. Scott Pruitt, his second top five start of the season, and Dale Earnhardt Jr., he's been in the top ten six times this year. Dale Jarrett, the Daytona 500 winner, twice runner-up here, and Steve Park, who was fourth at Atlanta and seventh at Bristol. Rookie Jeff Fuller, the former modified champion, has his first top ten start, and Jerry Nadeau, his third top ten of the season. Ward Burton, the winner two weeks ago at Darlington, and Mark Martin, winner of this race two years ago. Mike Skinner, who came so close to that first career win in Atlanta, and Joe Nemechek, who was fourth here in 98. Matt Kenseth, who leads the Rookie of the Year chase, and Bobby Labonte, winner at Rockingham. Stacy Compton has his best start of the season, and Chad Little. Dale Earnhardt, who won at Atlanta last month, and Ed Barrier. Rusty Wallace, who got that 50th career win last week, and Ricky Rudd. Michael Waltrip with Bill Elliott, who had a strong third at Daytona. Jeff Gordon hasn't won since Charlotte in October, and Dave Blaney makes his Texas debut. Brett Bodine cracked the top 25 in qualifying, and Johnny Benson coming off that impressive runner-up finish at Bristol. Kenny Irwin, last year's pole sitter, and Dick Trickle in the Joe Bessie, Jeffrey Bodine car. Gary Bradbury makes his first start of the season, replacing Rick Mast in the 41. Darrell Waltrip, three-time Winston Cup champion, solidly in the field. Jeremy Mayfield, fifth here last year. And Kenny Wallace, his fourth start at Texas. Adam Petty is NASCAR's first fourth-generation racer today. And Rick Mast has moved into the A.J. Foyt car. Elliott Sadler finished in the top ten here last year. And Ken Schrader, ninth at Daytona. Then the provisional starters, Jeff Burton, who won this race in 97, and Tony Stewart, last year's Rookie of the Year. Sterling Marlin, who has two top tens in Texas. And John Andretti, looking for his third career victory today. Jimmy Spencer, seventh year two years ago, and Bobby Hamilton with three Winston Cup wins to his credit. And finally, Robert Presley, who scored a career-best third-place finish here two years ago. In fact, there were five drivers who failed to qualify for this race. Todd Budine, Wally Dollenbach, Dave Marcus, Kyle Petty, and Robbie Gordon. Only six-tenths of a second separated first and last. Manufacturers breakdown in today's field. There will be 18 Fords, 16 Chevrolets, and nine Pontiacs. You see that Ford is leading right now with three wins this year over one for Chevrolet, two for Pontiac. 43 drivers will start this field today. 334 laps for 500 miles, a purse of over $4.3 million. The fuel win to 60 to 63, 65 laps. Race record was set last year by Terry Labonte at over 144 miles an hour. We'll be riding with seven different drivers in today's 500-mile race. Dale Earnhardt Jr. The Budweiser Cam starting from fourth position. 
Mike Skinner with the Lowe's onboard camera and his Richard Childress Chevrolet. He'll go off 11th. Bobby Labonte has the Circuit City camera inside his Joe Gibbs Pontiac, starting 14th. Ricky Rudd with the Texaco Haviland camera in his Robert Yates Racing Ford. The 20th starter. And the Siemens camera is in Dave Blaney's Bill Davis Pontiac from 24th spot. Johnny Benson coming oh so close to that first win. Here's Benson, the Lycos.com camera in his Tyler Jet Pontiac and Tony Stewart with the Home Depot camera in his Joe Gibbs Pontiac from 38th position. Let's uh, try Dick Bergeron on pit road. Is listening to Mark, I'm listening to Mark Barton in the number six car. That is one of the fastest cars out here. They are so comfortable with the setup that they have in that thing, even though they only had one practice session on the race setup. They didn't touch it this morning, Mike. He has won more than half the stock car races out here. Let's go to Ralph. Dick, as far as the front row is concerned, this race is really going to start on lap number three. Terry Labonte is going to make sure he leads lap number one. They're hoping to help Kevin LePage lead lap number two, who is sitting right next to him. That will give each of those teams five bonus points for leading a lap. After that, it's every man for himself. Trying to tame Texas. Boy, that's been a tall order here over the short history of this beautiful speed plant. The track, which has 173,000 seats, say that they have more season ticket holders than do the Dallas Cowboys. This track has been very successful with both NASCAR and Indy Racing League events since it opened. Ken Squire. Now the wind is gusting now, sometimes 10 to 15 miles per hour from the north to the south. That means they get a little kick going into turn number one. It follows them down the front straightaway. Michael. Getting set for this race to start. They're about half a mile away. You could see them zigzagging back and forth. They're getting a little heat in the tires and also cleaning the racing surface of the race tire. It's cool out there. The uh, folks in the stands, sweaters, jackets, things are about to heat up. Makes for faster racing. Cool weather, overcast. Tires will adhere well to the pavement, and the engines will breathe well as, as well. Pace car is in. The fourth direct TV 500 is set to go green and we're racing in Texas. himself of being able to lead that first lap. Kevin LePage from the outside pole did not quite get the go at the green and Scott Pruitt has slipped underneath him for second spot. LePage is third. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. there in the eight car is in fourth place. He has a very strong car in practice even as good as anyone. You see a lot of side by side racing back in the pack. Those first five or six cars are single file. Dale Jarrett fifth, Steve Park in sixth, rookie Jeff Fuller in seventh. Then here's the first side-by-side -side battle. Ward Burton, after that practice crash, he and Jerry Nadu tussle for eighth place. Boy, it was amazing, Mike, that after that crash, he'd gotten no laps on that Pontiac that he's driving here today before qualifying, went out and qualified at ninth, and looks like he has a good car for race setup. Riding with Mike Skinner, that's Ward Burton just ahead. Mike, you can see how flat the track is as they enter the turns. That's one thing they told me about the racetrack. If you start in, it's very, very flat, and the car floats into the corner. Lead change, turn one, Scott Pruitt, a NASCAR rookie. Well, pretty much a name only. He's tamed champ cars, sports cars. Here he is in the cup circuit. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. has moved into third place now as they go down the back straightaway into turn three. Earnhardt Jr. looking over the rear spoiler. Labonte, here he comes. Down on the inside, made it look easy. Boy, he has some horsepower under the hood of that Budweiser Chevrolet. So Scott Pruitt has led in NASCAR for the first time. And this also the first race that Terry Labonte has led since Rockingham back in October. 
Terry backslid about three or four spots, so uh, he's now back up to speed, but he got caught on the outside now, and they just can't go when they get on the high side of the racetrack. He was not going to take any chances up there in that second groove. It'll work in as time goes by, but right now, the faster way around this racetrack is right down on the bottom of the racetrack, and so Terry not wanting to take any chances. Too much racing yet to go to take chances. Here's Dale Earnhardt at 15th, and last week's winner, Rusty Wallace, the number two in 16, Matt Kenseth. Finished second late last night in that was Grand National event. And he's back there in 16th position. Upper left of your screen, red there like Stacy Compton. That 21st position means that he's lost a spot. Drivers in green there on the upper left. Those positions are drivers who gained a position or more since the last lap. Boy, Scott Pruitt's making this thing look pretty easy in the 32 car. He took the lead, and he's actually stretching just a little bit, but there's some cars behind him moving up pretty quick. One of them, Dale Jarrett. A little contact down in turn one. Ricky Rudd got traded a little paint with somebody there to no consequence as we've been green for all of these first six laps. There's that battle. It was Chad Little on the outside of Ricky Rudd down in turn one. And oh, run, ooh, and the did it again. again. Yes. They run almost a lap side by side. They said, hey, Chad, I better get on by <laughs> you, buddy. Seven of Michael Waltrip moves up underneath. There's the 42 in blue and green. That's Kenny Irwin and Johnny Benson trying to move up as they've pinned that 97 of Chad Little to the outside. From Ricky Rudd's car, looking back at Michael Waltrip's number seven. And up front, things have heated up for the lead. It has that. The eight car there, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has moved closer and closer on Scott Pruitt. And he brought Kevin LePage right along with him. You ride with Dale Earnhardt Jr., defending Bush Grand National Champion as he looks over the Ford of Scott Pruitt. Well, Mike, we were right here when this young man won the Bush Grand National race a couple of years back there, and he won his first race ever right here. He loves this track. They run one, two, Pruitt the leader. Earnhardt Jr. in second. Now, Terry Labonte, who's led three of the four Texas races, including this one, has dropped back to sixth place. Let's go to Pit Road. What's the problem? Mike, that number five has gotten pretty loose. The Chevy not handling the way he needs it to. So he is just going to drop back a little bit, try to be patient, and get that car a little bit tighter when they get him in for their first round of pit stops. Pruitt being pressured by Earnhardt Jr. And now back comes Kevin LePage, that purple and white 16. He fell back a little bit there at the beginning, but he has moved right back up into third place and in contention for the lead. Now here's the first group of the first pack. Now the field is split into two large packs, and this is the first part of the first one as things have strung out kind of quickly here at Texas in these first 10 laps. Now this all the first group of cars, and then there's, there's about three seconds back to where Ricky Rudd leads that second large group of cars that comprises the second half of the field, and they lack about half a lap to these three leaders. Yeah, and just behind them, Dale Jarrett's moving in there, Steve Park and Terry Labonte. So it's gonna be a big train of cars fighting as Dale Earnhardt Jr. tries to take the lead. For more on this outstanding Winston Cup rookie, Dick Bergeron. Well, Earnhardt Jr. won his very first ever Bush Series race right here in Texas, so he came filled with excitement and enthusiasm. But his crew is telling him, running with up there. He's running with a guy that doesn't have a lot of experience here at Texas, but then again, neither does anybody else in this field. Mike? He just backed off something. I don't know why he slowed down so much, and cars behind him backed off a little bit. Kevin LePage backed off. I don't know if they hit a slick spot and they thought something was going on out there, but they backed off, and Scott Pruitt has taken off a lot of lead, a lot of position changing back there for third, fourth, and fifth. Well, you're right. Steve Park went from fifth to third right now, and he's moved in on Earnhardt Jr. Something happened. They may have had a little contact in that group, but Dale Earnhardt Jr. definitely checked up. He was right up and under Scott Pruitt two laps ago, and now he's fallen seven-tenths of a second behind. We look back at the third-place car of Steve Park, and he also drives for Dale Earnhardt, Inc. He is Earnhardt Jr.'s teammate, and what a last couple of races that Park has had, including his first-ever Winston Cup poll. Dick, what happened to Dale Jr.? Well, there's all kinds of colors of things and clothing in this grandstand, Mike, and he looked up there and thought one of those yellow jackets was the caution light. Backed out of it for just a second because here in Texas, you don't want to mess around with a caution light, but look at him. He's doing fine. He's closing right back in on Pruitt. Well, he is, but that was a strange moment out there, really. I mean, they, 
they just slowed down and Pruitt just kept going and everybody else started passing everybody else back there for that third, fourth, and fifth, sixth positions. So well, one thing that is happening though, the aide of uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has caught Pruitt again. He's tightened right up. As we go back to Matt Kenseth here and Rusty Wallace as they fight back in the pack. This will be for 14th position. Last night, second place finisher against last week's Winston Cup winner. Let's go back to the front where you can see that Earnhardt Jr. is right on Scott Pruitt. Now his favorite place to try to pass has been entering turn one. He can't get much lower on the racetrack than Pruitt is though in turn three. No, he's been getting a good run off of turn four and that's what has allowed him to get up there going into turn one. Let's see if he's going to do it. Nope, but don't believe he'll do it this time. Not going to happen. 16 laps complete. Two rookies lead the field. Scott Pruitt and Dale Earnhardt Jr. with Steve Park in third. We'll be here comes the lead. Earnhardt Jr. going to turn three. And the crowd goes crazy on the front straightaway. They really pull for Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's got a lot of pressure right now. Steve Park and he's got. Oh, it. he hits him and turns him around. Caution is out. And everyone else will drive through that smoke screen to the caution flag as Steve Park and Scott Pruitt make contact. Steve Park just barely touched him as they were in out of turn four there, and it was just enough to turn him there. Doesn't take much of a touch at that point of the racetrack. You're almost out of control anyway, and just a little bit of a touch, and around he went. That's too bad. Scott Pruitt had the best run going of his NASCAR Winston Cup career. He had just given the low lane on the racetrack, not given, but allowed Dale Earnhardt Jr. the bottom lane. Earnhardt Jr. went by for the lead. Steve Park tried to follow through. The hole closed up. And Pruitt's car, you can't see the damage from this shot, but there is some roof flap. That's an aerodynamic device designed to keep the cars on the ground when they turn around, put their tail into the wind. It'll, it'll the pit crew will knock that one back down into position. And hopefully Scott Pruitt can stay in this race. He's got a lot of damage there. The car is uh, kind of dog-legging down through there. The left rear, you can see, has uh, a lot of damage there. Let's have a look at what happened. Steve Park in the one there, right there. They just barely make contact. And around he goes. Kevin LePage did a good job of dodging it. Terry Labonte comes along, goes down to the inside. Here comes Dale Jarrett and Mike Skinner. Here it is again. Just a little bit of a nudge coming up right here. And that sent the back end of Pruitt's forward around. Let's show you what uh, Ron Hornaday, or excuse me, what Dale Earnhardt Jr. saw in his mirror. Mike, it's amazing there wasn't more contact there. They were leading the race. They were the first three cars, and, and it was a miracle that a lot of people didn't get caught up in that wreck. Well, the best thing that happened there, buddy, was Pruitt, after he hit the wall, was able to keep the car against the wall, and everybody else had a clear path down to the inside and to the caution flag. Well, as he comes into the pits, so does the rest of the field. All coming down to make those adjustments. Well, let's go to Dick Bergren. Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to come in and take four tires. He is a little bit loose in and a bit tight coming out. They're going to try to adjust the car for that, in part with tire pressure at least. Crew now over the wall. Jackman, Jeff Clark, has the right side of the car up in the air. Four tire change. Right front tire bounds toward the 32 car. And let's go to Ralph Shaheen. Kevin LePage is in making changes on his car. He was a little loose off, so he's going to make an air pressure adjustment, taking the air pressure down a little bit. Steve Park came in. He took the track bar down one round as well. And a spinner as Elliot Sadler gets turned around. He got shuffled off the edge of the asphalt as everyone merged out coming out of their pit. And with all the rain last night, he was stuck in the mud. And Mike, one thing that happened here, a lot of the cars that were running back in the pack only took on two tires. So they were coming down, the, they were pitting back down pit road. They were coming out at a pretty good clip and he was there and he was coming out and as you say got clipped as, uh, or was he coming in? A traffic jam down pit road looked much like the one coming into the racetrack and there is still a line of track of folks trying to get in. Well this caution is the first one of the day. 19 laps are complete here in Texas.
Welcome back to Texas. We're under caution. On this replay, watch the one of Steve Park and the five, the red car, Terry Labonte. Everybody's trying to get out to that outside lane, and they just squeeze Elliot Sadler off into the grass, which is very wet. Yeah, he, he was pitting on the far end of the pit, so he'd already made his pit stop and was coming out and just got squeezed over there. And there's Jeff Burton in the 99 car having to take evasive action there. And remember, there's no tread on these tires, so they have no traction at all out there in the mud. Let's go to Steve Park's pit for an update, and Ralph. Well, Mike, Steve Park has had a pretty aggressive start to this race, as you've noticed, and so NASCAR has gone on the radio to his crew chief and asked Steve, please settle down a little bit or we're going to keep an eye on you. So Steve Park, they're telling him to just ease up a little bit. Yeah, the next thing he would see is a flag, and they'd come in and talk to him for a while. But, uh, you know, he's just trying so very hard. He's got a great race car, and it's hard to put a governor on that. All right, down in the first pit there of Scott Pruitt down toward turn one. He's lost a lap. He's been there in the pit so long. Dick, uh, can they get it fixed? Yeah, they're working on it, Mike. They're trying to straighten out the front end. The front wheels aren't pointing correctly, and here comes the green flag, and Pruitt's not going to beat the pack out with that one. Ricky Rudd also in here to get the front end aligned in his car, and there goes Pruitt. And Pruitt is absolutely disgusted that they didn't get him out sooner. We're back under green. Mike Skinner. Joe Nemechek, two of those cars that took on just two tires to gain track position, as Ned pointed out, they're going to battle Rusty Wallace for the lead. Well, I know one thing. They hate to see that 31 out in front because at the sister track here uh, in Atlanta, that car was a very dominant car with Mike Skinner. Had engine problems right near the end of the race, but he really had the car to beat all day long. Yeah, he was about to get his first NASCAR Winston Cup points victory. So, Ned, we'll add him to your list at the top of the day of couldas, wouldas, and shouldas. You're right. Because he came yeah. oh so close. Rusty Wallace making a move on the inside there on Mike Skinner in the turn three. Last week's winner becomes this week's leader. Skinner tightens it right up on his rear bumper. And Rusty will get the five bonus points for leading a lap for you fans that might not be familiar with NASCAR Winston Cup racing. Any driver who leads a lap during the competition whether it's in green flag conditions or under caution flag, gets five bonus points. And Ned, that's the first lap that Rusty Wallace has ever led at Texas. He's had some good runs here, but not uh, out front. Just behind these two guys that we're watching race very hard for the lead right now, the 22 of Ward Burton is moving in. Destroyed his car in practice here, took a backup, qualified with very few laps on it. Look at him go now. This car is really on the move right now. The 22 of Ward Burton. Looks like he's able to keep it right down on the bottom of the racetrack, which is good at this point of the race. And there's Matt Kenseth right behind Ward Burton in the number 22 the Pontiac. And Matt Kenseth in the Ford number 17 right behind him. Kenseth doing a good job. He's another of the rookies. Well, running up front is a good tonic. The last two finishes for Burton, third at Bristol, and the win at Darlington. Dick Bergeron has more. But the car is not exactly the way Ward Burton would like it, Mike. I realize he only had about an hour's worth of practice in that race car because of demolishing his primary car. It's a problem. He can't feel the throttle. He has told the crew that he wishes he had a sniffer throttle spring in it. If there's any way to fix it, he'd like to have that happen. That would be a long pit stop. Back for 13th place, Kenny Irwin, Felix Sabat is 42. Last year's winner of this race, Jerry Labonte in the five, and there's Steve Park battling. And here comes Park's boss and car <laughs> owner, Dale Earnhardt, in the three. Wonder how you race your boss. Do you give him any slack? I don't think so. These well, guys race pretty hard against each other. Well, tell me, you used to be Richard Petty's teammate. How did you race him? Well, I knew one thing. If I wrecked him, I didn't have to go to Randleman and find out whether I had a job or not. <laughs> Bill Stevens. Mike, a contrast in pit strategy in that last pit stop. Dale Earnhardt came in and took four tires. His crew chief, Kevin Hamlin, wanted to take a look at the tires coming off of that car to look at the wear to help him later in the race to gauge what they would do. Rusty Wallace came in. They took two tires. Robin Pemberton was more interested in track position early in the race, and it worked. They picked up nine spots. Including the lead. That's Wallace out front on the left of your screen. Ward Mark Skinner right with him, and look at the lead they've opened up. They've opened up a good lead, and Ward Burton, we talked about a moment ago how well he was running. He has really dropped back now to about the 10th or 11th position. 11th now. Ned, I was watching him. He got way up on the high side of the racetrack, and now everybody's freight training him just going right on by. 
Well, buddy, if you bang your foot and you get it so you can't really feel that throttle, what does that do for your feel of the race car? Well, the throttle's just like the steering. You drive the car with the throttle, so if you can't feel it, it's one of the good senses you have inside a race car to make it do what you want it to do. He gets in line there just ahead of Terry Labonte, and that will move Burton back to 12th place. For more on Ward Burton, Ken Squire. Well, I'm amazed he's doing anything with this car. Remember, this is a fresh car. He crashed that car on Friday. They did not make the Friday session final practice period. They were still working on it. They changed the motor. Then on Saturday, happy hour, they didn't get a chance to run. The only lap they turned was that qualifying lap that got him up into ninth position. And he is just doing an amazing job, and he is sore. He's walking with a very severe limp as he ambled out to that Caterpillar number 22 this morning. Let's go back at the front. Rusty Wallace on the left, Mike Skinner, but have a look who's coming. Not only Bobby Labonte in that green 18, but here comes Earnhardt Jr. back to the front. He restarted eighth. He's up to fourth. Right now, I think Dale Earnhardt Jr. may have the quickest car out there, but Bobby Labonte has a knack on these types of racetracks. He owns Atlanta. He might own Texas if he keeps running like he's running today. Our Circuit City Cam on board Bobby Labonte looking back at Earnhardt Jr. Already in just 25 laps, seven different leaders of this race. Labonte looking ahead at race leaders, Rusty Wallace in the Ford and Mike Skinner's Chevrolet. For more on Labonte, here's Ralph. Mike, I spoke to his crew chief, Jimmy Maycar, this morning in the garage area about why he thinks Bobby Labonte is in the position now to really chase a championship. He says, I noticed Bobby noticing the little things more than ever before. He visualizes everything around him. He didn't used to do that before. The little mistakes would cost him a place or two here or there, which cost you big points in the change for the Winston Cup. Not anymore. Bobby Labonte is a mature driver ready to claim his first title. Runner up for the championship last year. And Ward Burton continues to backslide. He'd, he'd gotten back on the low groove there and had run pretty good for a few laps, Mike. And then all of a sudden, the car gets under him. He gets up in that second groove and lost a couple more positions. We're going to have a fight for the front as the front four are closing up together. Boy, Bobby Labonte with uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. drafting along with him. He's run the leaders down very, very quickly. You're looking out of Dale Earnhardt's car as they start down, Dale Earnhardt Jr. as they start down the back straightaway. These cars are absolutely flying around this racetrack. Goodyear with a new tire here, and that means higher speeds, particularly corner speeds. Let's have a look with Joe Nemechek and our Fritos onboard telemetry at speed and RPM. Well, you can see as he's in the turn, the RPMs gets down in the mid 70s, but now they go up, the speed goes up with the RPMs. Over 8,000 RPMs. A little bit of brake as he went into the turn just to get the car set. Then he starts picking up speed, and you see that speed now going up over 185, 188 miles an hour. That explain that. You don't so much use the brake to slow the car as you do to set the car in the corner. Well, when you go in, you can almost run wide open around this racetrack. You do have to decelerate just a little bit, but it's better rather than just lifting all the way off the gas. Just hit the brakes a little bit because it, it won't affect the setup of the race car. It won't dump weight as much going into the corner as it would if you let off the gas and then back on the gas again. From our Lycos camera on board, Johnny Benson, as he passes number 12, Jeremy Mayfield. Mayfield now at seventh, and Johnny Benson has taken over sixth as he climbs the ladder. Bill Stevens has more. Mike, Johnny Benson's on a tear. Remember, he started 26, has worked his way up to six, but his crew chief there, James Ince, a little bit concerned. The last pit stop, he doesn't think they got enough fuel into the car. He's hoping for another caution to even the playing field. 38 laps complete. First and only caution of the day so far. Back at lap 18 when Steve Park and Scott Pruitt got together in turn four. <laughs> they must have not, not got any fuel in it because they hadn't run that far when they had the first caution. And not burned much. 
Rusty Wallace the leader at lap 39. It's Ford Chevy Pontiac. How's that for parity? Wallace, Skinner, and Labonte are the front three. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is fourth. And Matt Kenseth, fellow rookie, is fifth. are complete in the direct TV 500 Rusty Wallace's Ford continues to lead Mike Skinner's Chevy Bobby Labonte's Pontiac and the Chevy of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Now there's your front four and they have opened up quite a gap on fifth place Matt Kenseth it's 3.2 seconds from Earnhardt Jr. back to the fifth place car uh, not anymore Johnny Benson just got by him to take over that spot to so move Benson up to fifth and displace Kenseth to six there they are at the bottom of your screen New paint job for Benson this week. As the leaders back to turn one. Rusty uh, opening up a little bit of ground here. About half a second on Mike Skinner. You know, talking about 50 victories, when I talked to Rusty Wallace about finally getting that 50th victory, he got, you know, his 49th last year, and he thought he'd get the 50th and it'd be over with. He said it was such a burden. Now he can go back to living again because it was one of his great goals in life to win 50 races. He said it was like somebody lifted a weight off of him. And his goal now, 51. And then 52. Terry Labonte started this race from the pole and led it. He is now back at 10th place. Let's get an update from Dick Bergman. We can really have a neat time down here listening to the drivers on the radios talking to their crews. And about eight or nine laps ago, Terry Labonte radioed to his and said, I really need more engine. He was complaining he just didn't have enough motor. That's when he was behind Mark Martin, the number six. That very same lap, he closed about three car lengths on Martin at the end of the straightaway. You only do that one way, motor. Since then, he has gone by Mark Martin. He's closing in on the leaders. So uh, he maybe doesn't have as much motor as he'd like, Mike, but he's got a good bit of it there under the hood. Ned, did you ever meet a driver had enough motor? No, no I don't not. think so. No, <laughs> never have either. No, everybody wants more power. For 11th place, Mark Martin now has uh, Steve Park right behind him. Most of Park's career spent in the open wheel NASCAR Modifieds where he finished second in the championship. Spent some time in Dale Earnhardt's Bush car. Almost won the Bush race here in 97. Was running up front. The lapped car took him out. Mike, our leaders in just a moment or two are going to be in lap traffic. And I'll tell you, that makes a lot of difference in, in race cars a lot of time. When you start running other cars down, it changes the aerodynamics of the car. And what's good working up to lap traffic don't work as well after you get up there. Rusty Wallace is going to lap past Scott Pruitt. Pruitt will now be three laps down. He lost two in the pits as a result of his collision with Steve Park that brought out the race's only caution so far back at lap 18. Darrell Walter could be the next driver to go a lap down. He's not quite in the picture there, but he's not too far ahead of Rusty. There he is on the left of your screen. Running well over the race record set last year by about 10 miles an hour, but it's early yet. As Dick Bergman told us in the pre race show, an average of nine cars crash out of this race every one of the three years it's been held. So we have a ways to go. Remember Elliot Sadler, who got off in the mud uh, outside the pit lane? There he is. He's picked up 20 spots from where he had to restart after spinning out there. Now runs in the 21st position. Sadler, Jarrett, Labonte. Labonte making that outside pass similar to what he made when he passed DJ for the lead a year ago in this race. Terry takes over ninth. DJ back to 10th. You know, it's not often on CBS we see Dale Jarrett getting passed. Let's see. In Michigan last year. Well, that was a snoozer. Jarrett kind of ran away from everybody. <laughs> he won the Daytona 500 this Ned. year on CBS. And uh, I will point out, Ned has the same shirt and tie on that when Dale won that race back in February. So we'll see. Well, we don't have superstitions in this. No, no. Oh, not much. You could argue back and say it wasn't a snoozer to the Jarrett's, I'll tell well, you. Well, no. <laughs> a lot of fun. I'm kidding. Now, Jeff Gordon, remember, has not had a top five finish since his win at Charlotte last October. 
He is currently running in 19th position, starting 23rd. And he has yet to have a top 25 finish at this racetrack. As he said in the pre-race show, this track has just not been kind to him. He's run well, he's had not finished well. Turn four has been pretty bad for him. Both wrecks that he's had here were right off turn four. There you saw Bobby Hamilton just went a lap down. And going into the pits is Ken Schrader. This would be an unexpected stop for Schrader. He'll put at least right side tires on his Pontiac. As you watch second place Mike Skinner on your left and third place Bobby Labonte to the right. They are seven tenths of a second behind race leader Rusty Wallace. Straighter away, but he's going to lose a lap with that pit stop. Yeah, there goes the uh, lead car by the start finish line down into turn one. So, yeah, he's a lap down just by making that pit stop. They're running around the track now in uh, between 29 and 30 seconds, and they can make a pit stop in about 16 seconds. But to you slow down and get your speed back up, it's impossible to make a stop and not lose a lap. Battle for 10th place, Jeremy Mayfield. And Terry Labonte. Now here's Wallace about to lap Rick Mast, the new driver for A.J. Foyt. Mast had been contracted to Larry Hedrick in the 41 car, but here he is in A.J.'s car. He's been signed by A.J. for the season. Mike Bliss started out the year, and then uh, Dick Trickle aboard. For more on Rusty Wallace, let's go to Bill Stevens. Well, Mike, we already noted that they came in on that last pit stop and got two tires. However, they may be paying the price. Robin Pemberton, the crew chief for Rusty, just told me that car is getting tight now. Rusty is turning the steering wheel. The car does not want to respond as it should. So they got the track position they wanted, but now they're hoping for that yellow flag so they can get them in and make the adjustments they'll need. Second place is heating up. Here comes Labonte closing in on Mike Skinner's second position. It's still Ford, Chevy, and Pontiac in the front three spots here in Texas. CBS Sports coverage of the DirecTV 500 continues after this message and a word from your local CBS station. How unpredictable is Texas Motor Speedway of the top seven drivers right now? Five of them have never won a Winston Cup race. Mike Skinner in second, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in fourth, Johnny Benson in fifth, Matt Kenseth in sixth, Kevin LePage in seventh. Only leader Rusty Wallace and the man you're riding with Bobby Labonte know the way to victory lane in this division. Boy if I was ever to run another race I'd love to have a car that would stick to the bottom like Bobby Labonte's car was in turns three and four just then. That car looked like it's on a string right down on the white line takes the throttle back up never moves off that white line. Fastest man on the racetrack buddy is Jeff Burton. He is up to 10th after starting 37th. First round qualifying didn't get fast enough. Second round rained out so he had to take a provisional start. He's gained 28 spots. His crew chief Frankie Stoddard started out as a youngster in the pits watching whatever Butch Elms did to his car at a little quarter mile dirt Bear Ridge Speedway in Vermont. To find out how Stoddard got from there to here you'll have to pick up the uh, inaugural issue of Dick Bergman's new magazine Speedway Illustrated. Great story on Frankie Stoddard and that'll be on newsstands May 1st. Saw Bobby Labonte take over second place from Mike Skinner. Yeah, that car is very, very good. Talking about the 99 car, though, they spent last year just setting up for the race. They didn't worry about qualifying. They started in the back so many times that they're good at this. <laughs> they can work their way to the front. Certainly nothing new for them. 67 laps complete for more on Labonte. Here's Ralph. Mike, the last few years we've come here to the Texas racetrack, we've had trouble getting happy hour in. That's that final one hour of practice that takes place on Saturday afternoon. Gives the teams a final shot at setting up their race car. Crew chief Jimmy Maycar and driver Bobby Labonte decided they would take the Saturday morning session and make that their happy hour. They threw a handful of setups at their race car and got a good baseline for the race setup so that when they were a little loose in and a little tight off in the early running of this race, they knew what to do. They put on two tires, made a wedge adjustment, raised the track bar up two rounds, and now Bobby's got a great handling car, as noted by Buddy Baker, and he's charging to the front. That didn't just benefit Bobby, Ralph. It also benefited Tony Stewart. You're riding with Stewart, who is now 19th. Maycar and 
Stewart's crew chief, Greg Zipidelli, share an awful lot of information. And Stewart, who started 38th, has now halved the gap between his starting spot and the lead. He's 19th. Now well, Earnhardt got a little boxed in there. Yeah, Jeff Gordon went around him as they came up on Darrell Walker, who now has gone a lap down. And the unscheduled pit stopper a little bit early, maybe not unscheduled, is Johnny Benson in the pits here, was running in the top 10. Bill? There, yeah. That's exactly right. This is why James Ince was so concerned before. This is more a stop for fuel than it is for tires, but while they have them in, they want to get more new tires on that race car and get them out, but under green, that cost them. It's going to cost him at least a lap, Bill. At the time of his stop, Benson and Bill Elliott were the only single-car teams represented in the top 20. And now Benson will drop a lap back to at least 35th place. Now, what he does not want to see is a caution right, right now because he's really in the hole right now, and he'll have to drive his way out of it, but he certainly does not want to see a caution on the speedway. Well, the others will have to make a pit stop within 15 or 20 laps, and uh, certainly, or maybe even a little bit less than that. Second place, Dale Earnhardt Jr. underneath Mike Skinner. Third place, excuse me. Third place. We still have Wallace in front and Bobby Labonte in second. And he's closing. Bobby Labonte is closed right up on Rusty. He came up on a couple of cars running side by side right in front of him. Bobby was gaining a little bit each lap, but now that really allowed him to get right up on Rusty's almost on his bumper. As they put a lap on Brett Bodine there in the car number 11. Well, it'll be interesting to see how good the car is up out of that bottom part of the racetrack. We know he's lightning fast around the bottom. Bobby looked very quick on the high side of the racetrack also. Now they're going to work underneath the 41, Gary Bradbury making his return to Winston Cup Racing, driving for Larry Hedrick. His first start since Rockingham. Bobby Labonte likes that a little bit better than having to go on the outside. Bobby, of course, the NASCAR Winston Cup points leader going into this race. He'd like to get up there and pass Rusty Wallace and get those five bonus points. And boy, they work hard for that five bonus points because they add up as the year goes on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Championships have been won by bonus points. So Rusty Wallace leads Bobby Labonte by a narrow margin. 73 laps are complete as they try to tame the asphalt frontier. At the Texas Motor Speedway, only one caution thus far in the event as we check the race summary. 79 laps have been completed, 115 miles, and at the present time, Bobby Labonte has pushed that car out in front of Rusty Wallace, who's been fighting for second place and looks like he's losing that right now to Dale Earnhardt Jr. Let's join right now with Mike Joy and the guys in the booth. Pit stops have begun. Ken Stacy Compton has just been in. Scott Pruitt for a second time. And now Ward Burton is making his first green flag pit stop of the day. Bobby Labonte has taken the lead and Dale Earnhardt Jr. to second. Here's Rusty Wallace, though, on pit road. As soon as Wallace surrendered the lead, in he came. Let's uh, check first with Dick Bergren. Well, Ward Burton is going to be coming in because the handle has absolutely gone away on that race car. They think he may have a tire going down. They're also ready to put a rubber in the right rear spring of that car. This is going to be a long pit stop as a result of the work that they are in the process of doing. Let's go to Bill. Rusty Wallace halfway through his pit stop. Four tires. Another pound of air in the right rear. They were going to make a chassis adjustment, but called it off. Filled the car with fuel, and he gets out. A very good pit stop for Rusty Wallace. Brett Bodine is in. So is Wallace's teammate, Jeremy Mayfield, on pit road. Robert Presley and Jeff Gordon come to the pit lane, and here's Dale Earnhardt Sterling. and Michael Waltrip. Sterling Marlin gets his service and goes back out. Ricky Rudd is coming in. John Andretti is coming in. These are all scheduled pit stops now. They are, Ned, and the two leaders are still on the racetrack. You talk about a calamity right now. If the yellow is to fly now, it would really make some uh, of these cars uh, have to work very hard to get back up towards the lead. Jeff Fuller, Terry Labonte making pit stops. Joe Nemechek is in. Bill Elliott and Tony Stewart. Bill? Dale Earnhardt is in. That's an ill-handling race car. They made two chassis adjustments on the car, four tires. They even changed the air pressure in it. They are working from behind here. The car is not responding to Dale. Here's the race leader, Bobby Labonte on pit road. Kenny Irwin is in as well. Darrell Waltrip and Matt Kenseth making pit stops. 
Here's Ralph. Tommy Labonte making his way down pit road, 3,500 RPMs is what he's watching in the tachometer, so he stays right at the right pit lane speed. He brings it to a stop. They're very happy with the handling on this car. They're not gonna change anything but four tires, and they're gonna also put in full two fuel loads as he comes in to change tires on the left side now with Jeff Chandler working at one and very quick at the other, and he is underway. Adam Petty, Mike Skinner. They and are Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jr. All coming in for scheduled pit stop. Dale Jarrett comes in as Bill Elliott goes out. Let's go to Dick. Junior's crew anxiously anticipating his stop. Down pit road, he slides to his stop. 3,500 RPM, they kept telling him. Did not want a speeding penalty. He slowed, he stalled the race car. But Tony Uri Jr. now around the left side of the race car. He's the front tire changer. Son of the crew chief, almost done. Jr., another great stop. Dave Let's Blaine. go to Ralph. Big trickle in, Ralph. Mike, they just completed a stop on the 31 car. That car wasn't handling perfectly, but they made some adjustments on the 31 to get him ready. And he's backing out. Kevin LePage, Ed Barrier, Steve Park, Mark Mark and Jeff Burton on pit road. 85 laps complete. These are the first green flag pit stops of the day. LePage led the last lap ahead of Park and Martin. They've all pitted. Bill? Steve Park is in. They just put one round of wedge into the race car. They're finishing up the left side tires. Little bit of a hang up and a little lazy getting out of the pits. They also took two cans of fuel and away he goes. And look at this battle. Rusty Wallace, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Johnny Benson all battling. Now, Johnny Benson, this has put him back in the cycle where he wanted to be after having to make that early pit stop, so it's worked out well. But he'll have to stop before they do again if this thing can, continues to go green. But right now, he's in great shape. Yeah, this will be the battle, I think, for second place, Ned. Everyone on the board above them, and Yellow caution flag. has come out. Caution flag. Pointing toward turn two as caution is out, and one car is working its way around on the apron. Stacy Compton has made contact. Oh, the left rear end's almost out of that car, buddy. Yeah, the right rear's got some damage to it, and the right front tire you can see is very, very flat. He was up against the wall at some point in that rut. Well, Stacy Compton has been thrown and hogtied here by the Texas Motor Speedway, and we're under caution for the second time today. And I believe everyone made pit stops under green before that caution flag came out. The only exception might be Jimmy Spencer. And he, Jimmy had gone a lap down, so that did not affect the leaders that much. But uh, certainly gave him a big break. He'll probably put him back on the lead lap. Bobby Hamilton comes in as we go to caution. And there's a look at Spencer. 11 leaders today ties the record. We're not even halfway home. Stay with us. Eighty nine laps are completed. John Andretti comes to pit road for service. Now John uh, Jimmy Spencer has made a pit stop under this caution flag. He was the race leader but because he had not stopped and Johnny Benson made a pit stop because he was out of sequence with the rest of the cars having pitted early. Let's show you why we're under caution here at lap 89. We see that car coming off of turn four, or was that turn two, buddy? He, anyway, it looked like he blew a tire. Oh. He was going in turn one and, and actually got a little bit sideways there and then just got right up into the wall. It looked like maybe a tire might have gone flat, but he lost the back of the car first before it got up into the outside wall. So rookie Stacy Compton from out of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series had his best qualifying effort of the year and looks like the Mark Mellon car is out of the race. Let's check on pit road with Ralph. Many things to focus on while they're making their pit stops. Well CBS is always trying to come up with new ways of giving the viewers at home something different to look at. So we mounted this camera on Bobby Labonte's pit board. He stuck it out. Bobby made his pit stop and when he was leaving instead of commenting about the great pit stop or how the new tires felt or whatever Bobby said hey that's a pretty cool camera guy he's mounted up there. That's pretty neat. So you would think they'd have so much on their mind. Instead they're busy just noticing everything. <laughs> Dick. There's Bobby Labonte. And in one lap we'll go racing. Bobby Labonte is the leader. 
Rusty Wallace in second Dale Earnhardt Junior in third now Ward Burton complaining of handling problems now has dropped off the lead lap back to 38th place Dick Bergman. Yeah they came in here Mike they took all four tires off Tommy Baldwin the crew chief climbed underneath the car took a look at all the springs all the shocks they bounced the car up and down they said they could find nothing wrong with it so they changed the air pressure right back to where they had started the race where he was good and they told him good luck buddy and he's out there at 180 miles an hour to Bill. Well you've heard the term we're lucky to be here well that certainly comes into play for the Rusty Wallace pit crew I talked to Robin Pemberton this morning in the garages and he was sweating bullets his pit crew was socked in by weather in Mississippi waiting for an airplane to get him here to Texas they finally got a flight and they got here to the track exactly one hour before the green flag. Twenty seven cars are on the lead lap bill Bobby Labonte the leader Rusty Wallace Dale Earnhardt Jr. Mike Skinner Matt Kenseth at the top five. Jeff Burton, Terry Labonte, Kevin LePage, Dale Jarrett, Jeremy Mayfield, the top 10. Steve Park, Mark Martin, Jerry Nadu, Jeff Gordon, Joe Nemechek, that's 15. Elliot Sadler, Bill Elliott, Dale Earnhardt, Kenny Irwin, Michael Waltrip is 20th. Jimmy Spencer, Johnny Benson, Bobby Hamilton, Dave Blaney, Sterling Marlin, Ricky Rudd, Tony Stewart. Those are the 27 cars on the lead lap. Yeah, and those four cars on the outside uh, when they drop the green flag on the tail end of the lead lap, and they'll. This is very dangerous because they're going to fight to stay in the lead lap to fight as hard as they possibly can. That's Dave Blaney, Sterling Marlin, Ricky Rudd, and Tony Stewart. Bobby Labonte right in the middle there. He's in the green car, and there are four cars that are on the tail end of the lead lap, as Betty said now. Well, now there's more in it because the cars that started on the inside, led by Jeff Fuller, were a lap down, and they're also in front of race leader, the green number 18. Right middle of your screen was Bobby Labonte. And he's on the inside of his teammate, Tony Stewart, trying to put him a lap down. Ride with Bobby Labonte as he works underneath Ricky Rudd. This is about the time if you're Bobby Labonte, you have to tell yourself, you're fast, be patient, you have a car that can win, don't try to get them all in one turn. One turn. Tony Stewart lined up right behind. Boy, traffic jam in the back straightaway. It is heavy. Three wide back behind the leaders. And even that, the leader, Bobby <laughs> Labonte, made it three wide, going by a couple of cars there. One guy that really had it tough for Dale Earnhardt Jr. He got caught up in when they dropped the green flag there, up in lap traffic there, and just really dropped back quite a ways. Now in front of Labonte, Jeff Fuller, Dick Trickle, up there trying to stay on the tail end of the lead lap. And uh, Robert Presley as well. That's Presley just in front of Labonte. Ralph? Mike, when you're running in traffic like this, the way the air flows off the car in front of you like it's doing right to Bobby Labonte as you watch him chasing down the lead pack right now, that air can dramatically affect the way the front end of the car handles. Bobby Labonte was suffering what is known as an aero push. The air would come off of the car in front of him and make his car want to slide up the racetrack because now that there are two grooves working, Bobby feels he'll have a better opportunity to get around that aero push. He's got a pretty good distance lead on the second place car. It was 1.7 seconds last time they came past. With a couple of lap cars in between. And he's got to work this traffic. Rusty Wallace second, Mike Skinner, Dale Earnhardt Jr. battling side by side for third. Or fourth, rather. There's your third place car. Earnhardt Jr.'s rookie nemesis, Matt Kenson. That's yellow number 17. Yeah, and he's got so much traffic around him. Jeff Burton there in the 99. All these guys are going back and forth around trying to get the advantage. You see Mike Skinner now got a little bit out of the throttle and give Earnhardt Jr. a break there in the center part of the corner. Single file and the fellows who are running for their racing lives right now are Jeff Fuller and Robert Presley. They are ahead of the race leader Bobby Labonte. As we watch Bobby's older brother, defending champion in this race, driving number five, Terry Labonte, and the outside pole sitter, Kevin LePage, running right with him. That just goes to show you, even cars that are a lap down, they have good race cars, because right now they've picked it up, and Bobby Labonte hadn't been able to get by them, and they're not holding him up. They've uh, made pit stops, have fresh tires, and perhaps made adjustments on their cars and they are good. Here comes Earnhardt Jr. alongside fellow rookie Kenseth. He's 
strong race car. He made that move on the outside. Usually when you move out there, you get hung up and, and go back. He just went right on by Matt Tenson. Now he has the lap car of John Andretti just ahead. The Petty Pontiac working against the Bill Davis Pontiac. 93 is Dave Blaney. Sounds pretty good, man. <laughs> Well, buddy, car in the top groove, car in the bottom groove. How do you be patient in this situation? Well, and Matt Kenseth making a move on the outside there. He got hung up, had to back out of the throttle. Now he's backpedaling a little. That's what you have well, to have, though, patience, because you can't panic and pull over in the traffic just because they moved up on you. And now Earnhardt Jr., he's got to look like that vulture in the cartoon saying, patience, heck, I'm going to go out and kill something. Because <laughs> he wanted that spot, and Matt Kenseth blew on by him. Now here's Mike Skinner right behind him. John Andretti on the outside of Earnhardt as they head down in turn one. And you can see the car actually get sideways in there in the corner there. That's what we call taking the air off the spoiler. As Earnhardt Jr. started turning in the corner, Andretti was on the outside and the car just went sideways getting off into turn one. Saw a little wiggle from Skinner there as he got up alongside Andretti. And here comes Jeff Burton from a provisional start. Coming toward the front, number 99, up to sixth. Well, let's have a look now that the track has changed on our Fritos telemetry with Michael Walter. See if there's any difference in speed or RPM. A hundred laps into this race. Little traffic there. You see those RPMs going up there at about 8,600. Yeah, they qualified 192 miles an hour, and people are saying, where's the 192 at right now? But this is race conditions. You don't have the front end blocked off. Uh, they tape the nose of the car to get more downforce. The air passes over the car better, and you have fresh tires and everything. It's the best conditions when you qualify. Right now in race conditions, you won't see those speeds. Bobby Labonte works over Robert Presley. Remember, this is one of Presley's favorite racetracks. He finished third here two years ago. Driving at 77. I bet Bobby's saying, well, this isn't all bad. I'm still leading. Nobody's catching me, and I'm sitting here with uh, lap traffic, and they're pulling me along. Now, he has gotten past Dick Trickle, and now Labonte will put Presley a lap down. So the only car between Labonte and Daylight is the Pontiac of Jeff Fuller. There's Fuller. Battle for seventh place. Seventh, eighth, and ninth. And a little further back than that. As they work underneath John Andretti, Dale Earnhardt, and Steve Park, that's 12th and 13th. There's Mark Martin on the left of your screen in car number six. Dave Blaney, Earnhardt there in the number three, the black car. As they head off down in the corners, these, this is not a, a walk in the park. I'm noticing a lot of wheel movement uh, sliding around. Fuller going a lot down now, just in a second, because Bobby Labonte has closed in on him. So now Labonte has clear sailing for about half the racetrack around. And the second place car from Rusty Wallace on back still has to negotiate that traffic to have a shot at Bobby Labonte. And he's running over two seconds behind him. Looking at this battle here, back about 20, or rather 16th position. And here's Jeff Burton trying to put the move to Mike Skinner. They are fifth and sixth. 106 laps complete in Texas. Bobby Labonte leads Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Nextel. How business gets done. After 110 laps have been completed, 165 miles, 11 leaders up in front, 12 lead changes, a couple of cautions, and Stacy Compton in that second caution, uh, a big victim there. He crashed, got through it, crashed earlier, and we've just had an incident over in turn number two. Let's get back with the story. Here's Mike Joy. 
big crash up in turn two and there is one of the cars involved Jeff Gordon again has been snake bit here in Texas. You see the damage to the uh, hood and the left side of his Rick Hendrick Chevrolet and there are other cars involved. Mike Real. you're right and a car has been on top of that car. You can see the hood there mashed straight down where a car has been on top of the hood. Bill Elliott was definitely involved. He, he did get his car going and is going around uh, the racetrack now trying to catch up. You see that debris on the racetrack. One car, light blue car, got up into the wall pretty hard. Uh, that could have been Jerry Nadu. Let's have a look. Hey, Blaney loose. Everybody checks up, and it's Nadu who goes around off Gordon's bumper. Right behind Gordon was and there's Bill Evans. He's the one buddy that got up on top of Gordon right on top there. They're going down through there on two wheels. As a matter of fact Bill Elliott very lucky not to get upside down. Here it is again. They were running so close coming off of turn two. See Chad Little in the green car getting slowed down. From Johnny Benson. Uh oh hole closed up too quick for him. Oh, look at Bill Elliott. He, he could go to the Joey Chetwood show if he wanted to. He went down through there on two wheels. Here it is again as Nadu goes hard into the wall. Now, I want you to watch the 93 right there, Blaney. Look how he gets loose, checks up, and everybody else just accordions behind him. Yeah, and he got touched by Nadu. That really got Nadu started on this wreck. Johnny Benson just caught up in the middle there had nothing to do with it. Did a great job not to wipe his car out. And the two Dallas Fort Worth sponsored cars Nadu's and Benson's both in trouble. Now here's Elliott's car being pushed back to the garage area. A lot of damage on his Ford Had that great run at Daytona finished in third place. And Dick Bergeron can give us an update. Bernhardt Jr. just clicked off the best pit stop of the day and every other pit stop he has pulled has been a great one. They're all in the 15 second range. The car has been absolutely perfect. He is even telling himself and his crew on the radio, I just have to be patient. Let's go to Ralph. Pretty happy down here with the pit stop on the 18 as well. The world pit crew champions of 1999 clicked off a 15.4 second stop. They're pretty happy with the handling of the car it was getting a little bit tight. They made a slight air pressure adjustment went up just a touch on the air pressures here with the 18 Bill Stevens. Not too many happy people in the Rusty Wallace pit. That was the worst pit stop they've had today An air hose was in the way. Rusty had to wait until they moved it from out in front of the car. And as we look at the leaderboard they are sinking rapidly. We'll have to check Bill because there's very little apparent damage to Johnny Benson's car. He was the last car into that skirmish with Bill Elliott up on top of Jeff Gordon. They're doing a little. Uh, Denton fender work on the right front though of Benson's car. So it may be a little more serious than we first thought. CBS Sports coverage of the Direct TV 500 continues after this message and a word from your local CBS station. Sky high views of today's race courtesy the Bud One Airship and Budweiser the official beer of NASCAR 115 laps complete or under the third caution of the day for a crash involving at least four cars in turn two Bill Elliott Jeff Gordon Johnny Benson Jerry Nadu were involved it was the 93 of Dave Blaney that got up and out of the groove and everybody checked up to try to take avoidance and several ended up in the wall and Elliott ended up on top of the hood of Jeff Gordon's car. They've continued to work on it, Mike. Each lap he comes in, they do a little bit more work. See, they put a lot of tape in there, but the aero package of his Chevrolet is not what it needs to be to run the speeds they run here. Let's get out the Gordon file on Texas as they work on Bill Elliott's car in the garage area. 1997, slow car, Jimmy Spencer. Gordon is leading, Ernie Irvin in the wall. Hello. Gordon knocked out one year later. Ow! That's got to hurt. Oh. Cut a tire down coming off turn four. Whew. Last year he finished 30th. That's Gordon's best run here. Bill Stevens is back there where all of the hammers are banging in the garage at Bill Elliott's car. 
Yeah, Mike, Bill Elliott, not a happy guy. Very frustrated, Bill. You've been watching the work on the car here. You're not feeling too good. Well, I feel fine. I mean, it's kind of been par for the course. I mean, just, you know, last week at Bristol, we broke a transmission. It was kind of a weird deal. And then, you know, I just got caught up in that deal. Wasn't a lot I could do. You know, Jeff got into the whatever happened, he in the 25 car. And then I would have been okay, but then I got hit from behind. And, one of them days. Are you going to get back into this thing? Oh, yeah, we'll get back and ride around a little bit. Let's go to Ralph Shaheen. Mike, they've been very busy down here in Jeff Gordon's pit working on the number 24, trying to get him back into some form of aerodynamic shape. The biggest problem is the body, especially all around the front end, trying to get that car to handle the best they can aerodynamically. In fact, they're saying she's not pretty, but we're going to do the best we can to get as many points as we can here today. Nothing aerodynamic about duct tape, is there? No, and I'm just looking at the hood. That's the uh, carburetor just under the P on the front of that DuPont Chevrolet there as he goes down, and it's a miracle that didn't knock the carburetor all the way off that car. That's the truth, and you you know, they talked about the Chevrolets at the beginning of the year not having downforce on the front end. Hey, maybe that dent there will <laughs> put more downforce <laughs> on the front end. Ned, Ned. <laughs> not what he wants, is No. We saw Jerry Nadeau's car headed for the hauler, the Danbury, Connecticut driver is out of the race. Let's set the field for you. We have 21 cars on the lead lap. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the class of the field. Bobby Labonte is second. Steve Park is third. Mark Martin, fourth, the highest he's been today. And Jeremy Mayfield is fifth in the number 12. Rookie Matt Kenseth is number 17. There's that yellow car in sixth place. Dale Jarrett, seventh. Kevin LePage, the outside pole sitter, eighth. Blue roof white car is Rusty Wallace. He is ninth. Terry Labonte is 10th. Mike Skinner is 11th. Dale Earnhardt's 12th. Joe Nemechek, Elliot Sadler, Michael Waltrip, and also on the lead lap, Jimmy Spencer, Jeff Burton, way back, 17th. Kenny Irwin, Bobby Hamilton, Johnny Benson, and Jeff Gordon are still on the lead lap, but those cars were damaged somewhat in the turn two crash. Riding with Bobby Labonte here in the Interstate Batteries uh, car with the Circuit City camera. I think I mentioned in the pre-race show, Mike, that, that we'd had 11 straight winners, not a repeat. Bobby Labonte is the only driver who has repeated during that period of time. He did win the last race of the season in Atlanta. Let's go green at lap 118. Treble front straightaway. Sterling Marlin slams into Elliott Sadler, and Marlin goes for a ride. Go pace car, go. Man, pace car was going down pit road. It looked like Sterling was on his way into there. A break for Dick Trickle. Dick Trickle's out in front of the race leaders. And I think the caution will have to come out because Sterling probably won't be able to get out of that wet grass. Here comes Jeff Fuller trying to race the leaders back and Tony Stewart. Tony Stewart trying to get back before Dale Earnhardt Jr. is not going to make it. Yes, yes he, he is. is. Tony Stewart made it, but... Jeff Fuller didn't quite make it. It all happened on the restart, and again, it has rained so much here all day yesterday, and again last night that these slick tires gain no grip on that very, very wet grass. Because his father had to say straighten the yeah, wheels. Exactly. That's what he needs to do because that's uh, he, he doesn't oh. realize it has the wheels cut. I don't think you've been stuck in the mud. I have. Yes. <laughs> Now you'll see the 21 of Sadler on the outside. And the problem, oh, Marlon got squeezed up and right in yep. to Sadler. And then Sadler had trouble getting going to speed. And we had talked about it before the race started. Anybody got in the grass today was going to be in trouble, Ned. Yes. Marlon is so has now, wet in there. Marlon's now it. lost a lap. Slid down there on the end of that stuff. Now he's getting a little bit of help from the safety workers to push him out. He didn't need a lot of help, obviously two guys were able to get him out of there and we're back under caution again and Elliot Sadler's car goes to the garage welcome back to Texas 121 laps complete Mike Joy with Buddy Baker and Ned Jarrett Sterling Marlin with an extended pit stop and a lot more of that duct tape Bill Stevens yeah, you got that right, Mike. They just went through a couple of rolls of that stuff to try to cobble together the front of the number 40 car. Actually, the news isn't as bad as it could have been. Really superficial damage. Other than the taping on the front, the thing that took them the longest on that pit stop was to get all the grass and the sod out from underneath the undercarriage in the back. Since they had just pitted before that caution, didn't have to change the rubber, obviously didn't flat spot the tires, so he's good to go. 
Jeff Gordon makes a pit stop as does Dick Trickle Trickle and Tony Stewart with the big beneficiaries of that caution flag Trickle in turn two got out in front of the race leader Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Tony Stewart nipped him at the caution flag to get back on the lead lap so cleanup continues and there is Trickle completing his stop and he'll roll past Jeff Gordon to whom much more tape is being applied. Of course, that's the car that's normally driven by Jeffrey Bodine, the car number 60, and he said yesterday that with, uh, in an interview with Ken Squire that he planned to race again in California next month. Yeah, he looked pretty good other than he, having the uh, cast on his right arm and, and uh, wearing that brace on his uh, midsection, but he really is alert and uh, very, he's ready to go back racing, I think, as soon as they remove the braces. Sterling Marlin makes another pit stop, trying to keep from going another lap down. And as you ride with the leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr., behind the Chevrolet safety car. Let's get an update on Earnhardt Jr.'s day from Dick Bergman. Well, he was just talking to his crew, Mike. He was complaining about some debris on the front straightaway here. Obviously, he wants the cleanest possible racetrack in front of him where they dropped the green flag. So all of a sudden, here goes NASCAR back out on the racetrack. And sure enough, they found some of that debris. So we should be good to go. They've just told the crews one to go. Corral. Bobby Labonte's having a lot of fun talking back and forth with his crew chief, Jimmy Maycar. But if you think the life of one of these drivers is uh, glamorous, here's an idea of what Bobby's schedule has been like. This past Wednesday, he was at Greenville Pickett Speedway in South Carolina testing for Martinsville, and he crashed their short track car. Thursday, he came all the way here to Texas. It's been nothing but concerts and autograph sessions, as you would imagine when you're in your home state. And then on Monday, Ken, he's got a television commercial shoot, then a test Tuesday and Wednesday in Talladega. It won't be until next Thursday when Bobby Labonte finally gets a day off, Ken. Yeah, Bobby Labonte, like so many of these Winston Cup runners, you don't think about all those other things they have to do besides get out here on Sunday. Now you're riding with Tony Stewart, and what a story here. He's up to 19th on this restart. He is in the lead lap, and uh, he's going to be starting in front of Trickle and Gordon and Spencer in that lead lap. It'll be fun to see if he can fight his way back up to the front of the field and run with those top runners. This is the kind of odds he likes to take on. Getting set for a start, here's Mike Joy. And Ken, they're waving it off. We're going to hold for caution one more lap. Jeff Gordon hangs on the lead lap, and here's Adam Petty. Let's catch up with the 19 year old. His great grandfather, Lee Petty, a NASCAR champion in the 50s and winner of the first Daytona 500. His, da his grandfather, the King, Richard Petty, winner of seven Daytona 500s and seven Winston Cups. His father, Kyle Petty, has been to Winston Cup victory lane as well. And so now he's a fourth generation driver. That's a first for NASCAR, and it may well be a first for any professional, major professional sport. But there's Adam. He's in 30th place in his first Winston Cup drive. One lap down to the race leader. 124 laps completed as they try to tame Texas. This CBS Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Budweiser, the official beer of NASCAR. Hey, race fans, this Bud's for you. After 125 of 334 laps, 187 and a half miles, 12 leaders, lead change 14 times, speed down to 134, four cautions for 22 laps. Three cars have crashed out. Well, Elliot may be getting back here. We're getting set to go racing once again. Let's try it again with Mike Joy. Getting set for the restart, Dale Earnhardt Jr. leads Bobby Labonte and 20 more cars on the lead lap. Inside, that's Jeff Fuller trying to get back on the lead lap, but Earnhardt gets a good jump as they head off toward turn one, 126 laps complete. Earnhardt kind of dragged on the brake there, so Fuller had to wait for him to start the race. Bobby Labonte trying to clear the lap traffic and can't. That allows Earnhardt to get out in front. A pretty good margin. Fuller is the second car in line, and now Labonte clears Robert Presley. So one lap car separates Labonte from the leader. A little further back, Dale Jarrett, Kevin LePage, Terry Labonte, Rusty Wallace all in a pack. As they tried to clear that lap traffic as well. And they're having to do it up on the outside as we look out the back of Dave Blaney's car. Looking back at seventh place, Dale Jarrett. Clear low, clear low. Bob Jeffers, the spotter for Dale Jarrett. Good job, everybody. I thought so. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little cheerleading there. 
With lap cars restarting on the inside and the 22 lead lap cars on the outside, it takes a little while for the field to sort out here. Jarrett goes under Blaney as they head down in turn three, and Kevin LePage just back. goes right with him as they go by, right by uh, Dave Blaney in the uh, number 93. Now Blaney is one lap down. Looking ahead at LePage. And up front, right side of your screen, Labonte gets underneath Jeff Fuller and now has clear sailing toward race leader Dale Earnhardt Jr. Good battle here for 11th position. Rusty Wallace, Mike Skinner in the car number 31, Dale Earnhardt in the black number three. Riding with Mike Skinner here now as no. his teammate comes up on him. <laughs> Anybody remembers Atlanta, they made a little contact when they were racing each other down there. This time, no no foul. You could see Earnhardt was a little quicker, so Skinner just let him go right under. But you know, for teammates, they race more like brothers. They, they race hard, yes. that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. And when they were racing in Atlanta, the incident that Brady mentioned, they were racing for the lead. For the lead, that makes a big difference. Kenny Frader's car a little bit loose, the uh, number 36 there, the yellow car on the inside of Skinner. Schrader's also one lap down. There's our Lowe's camera on board Mike Skinner. Looking back at Schrader. Well, you can see the lead that Dale Earnhardt Jr. has opened up on Bobby Labonte, but now that Labonte is clear of lap traffic, he may have an opportunity to close back in. There you see Bobby Labonte and that little dot out there past the condominiums in turn two. That is Earnhardt Jr. Boy, what, they have to be so proud. I mean, first year Winston Cup uh, for all the group there. They moved up from Bush Grand National with Dale Earnhardt Jr. as crew chiefs and everyone. What a great job. I mean, to be able to lead the first year period. One of the cars, buddy, that was involved in that most recent incident, Elliot Sadler in the garage. Here's Bill Stevens with an update. Mike, Elliot Sadler's been taken to the infield care center complaining of some pretty severe pain in his left arm and left shoulder. Crew chief Mike Beam is actually looking around to maybe put somebody back into that car if they can get it repaired. This team is very disappointed. The Wood Brothers hoping for a big day today. It was on this day back in 1967. Kelly Yarbrough won the Atlanta 500, and that was his first career victory. 134 laps, seventh place battle. There's Dale Jarrett, 88. Kevin LePage, number 16. They're pulling up on Ward Burton, and Burton is also one lap down in the Bill Davis 22. They made some good adjustments on the 88 car of Dale Jarrett because now he's able to run that lower line and he has good corner speed, so they fixed Clear. their car somewhat from early in the race when he couldn't keep up. Courtesy move by Ward Burton. He just moved up and let him go. Didn't. Didn't block the lane. He says that the favor will be returned somewhere down the road, or maybe it already has. You, you don't know. I mean, these drivers, uh, they they will look out for each other on occasions. And Jared has really moved away from Kevin LePage now, and he's got Mark Martin in his sights. That's the sixth place car. And that's another good guy. This part of the race, he'll move over and let him go because he watches his mirror and knows that Jared's much quicker right now, so he won't race him for that spot. It's been boom or bust for Mark Martin here in Texas. He hit a gusher in 98 as the race winner. But the other two years they've had this race has finished no better than 34th. You know, I don't want to say anything, but I thought I saw a little bit of smoke. I see Mark Martin just move over and let him go there. Now that will, someday he'll return that oh, favor. Yeah. Ride with Joe Nemechek. Have another look at our wrenchhead.com telemetry this time. The RPMs on the bottom. That's the revolutions per minute of the engine. 83, 84, 85, 100 RPMs. I saw 190 miles an hour also in that telemetry just then. He just took 13th place away for Mike Skinner. Here's your third place battle, Steve Park. The Chevrolet of Dale Earnhardt and Jeremy Mayfield's four. Now from Dale Earnhardt Jr. to Bobby Labonte, it is four seconds. 
That's from here to eternity on the racetrack. Or a good-sized pasture. Believe me, he's moved moved around here quite well. Earnhardt Jr. is just doing it his own way right now. He's checking Look at out. You. you can't even see him. It's about the distance from Dallas to Fort Worth, from first to second. But long way to go. Almost 200 laps to go. Anything can happen, and given the history of this racetrack, most likely will. Absolutely. Dick Bergren. Just came, Brad Parrott from Dale Jarrett's car just came roaring down here to Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s pit, flapping his arms in the breeze with a giant smile on his face. He's complaining. He said, you guys are taking the bone away from my driver. Will you please slow down? <laughs> Well, Dick Bergen, one of the reasons why Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s lead has grown so big is because Bobby Labonte's race car has become very, very loose, and he just cannot keep up the frantic pace that Earnhardt Jr. has set. They've been making all their adjustments to the 18 car with air pressure. They're talking about adjusting the track bar as well now on their next pit stop. So Dale Earnhardt Jr. has the lead over Bobby Labonte's Pontiac, Steve Park, Chevrolet, Jeremy Mayfield, and Matt Kenseth. Welcome back to Fort Worth. Another Texas twister has claimed Johnny Benson. You see Benson climbing out of the Beverly Chevrolet and also involved is John Andretti. Something went all the way through the radiator on that car apart, flew through the front of that car and knocked a hole in the radiator. Here's what happened. They were coming off a of turn two. Ricky Rudd in the 28 up front there and the 10 car of Johnny Benson as Rudd slows down a little bit, it looks like, and Benson under the 43 looked like it just got loose, buddy, as it came off of there. Benson had a hard hit into the wall. Let's ride along with him. Ow. You could hear the RPMs really get up there as the back started around on Benson's car. That's the only Texas owned car in the race, Tim Beverly from Tyler. And leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is in, Dick. Dale Earnhardt Jr. indeed is in, Mike. The crew had been talking about a two-tire change. It's going to be a four-tire change, however, as Jeff Clark jumps over Tony Yuri. They have had just absolutely flawless tire changes, pit stops today. This young 25-year-old driver poised to win his first ever. Terrell. Well, a 15.7 stop down here for the crew of Bobby Labonte. Another great stop. Peter Jennings raised the track bar down one quarter of a turn, and they put four tires on it. They're hoping that track bar adjustment will get that car handling the way they need it. Bill Stevens? Steve Park had a track bar adjustment. They dropped it one turn. They took one rubber out of the right rear. Hopefully that'll correct the problem with that car in traffic. It has a tight condition. Matt Kenseth, two tire stop, no adjustments. Yeah, there were several cars that really advanced up through the uh, field there on that stop. I noticed that uh, Junior really was way back when two, he came back out. Rusty Wallace took on two tires. Dale Jarrett took on two tires. I think DJ came out first. We'll see when it's all uh, settled down here. Playing for track position in Texas. CBS Sports coverage of the DirecTV 500 continues after this message and a word from your local station. Welcome back to Texas. 148 laps complete. We've had two lead changes under caution. Michael Waltrip led a lap, and as Ned theorized, the first car out of the pits was Dale Jarrett. He is the 14th different leader today. He leads Rusty Wallace, Matt Kenseth, Terry Labonte, and Dale Earnhardt Jr., who led the race when the caution came out, came out of the pits in fifth place. Well, Texas Motor Speedway is not one, but two racetracks. They opened the second one up Thursday night. Big crowd on hand, a lot of dirt slinging. A lot of passing, a lot of great racing, and Ken Squire is with the fellow who won the big Friday night feature. 
Indeed, they have brought back American sprint car racing here at Texas and soon to be at Bristol and Charlotte, North Carolina. And the king of the outlaws, Danny Lasoski, is here. Danny, how soon are we going to see you in one of these things? Well, that'd be a great deal for us to do that. But right now, I'm real happy with the Pennzoil World of Outlaws. Coming to places like Texas Motor Speedway, Charlotte, Bristol, I'm just excited about being here. Well, you had a sellout crowd, magnificent crowd, to watch you win on Friday night. And take a little look at it right here for a moment. Oh, yeah, there we are, smoking a tire, coming off four, I think, for the checkered. It was a great day to be here, and uh, here we are in Victory Lane. I'll tell you what, I was happiest day for a long time, be here. First uh, inaugural winner here at Texas Motor Speedway, and we're, we're excited about coming back. Well, thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing these sprint cars a lot more. It's a great addition to this track and a lot of other tracks. Thanks for having us. All right, let's go to Dick for just a moment. Dale Jarrett took just two tires on that last pit stop. That's how come he is in the lead. He had a quicker pit stop than almost anybody else. Earnhardt Jr. and his crew were going to take two. They changed their minds at the absolute minute. Indeed, he was here on pit road when they changed their mind to go to four tires instead of two. We are going to see some people try two later. It is a good strategy. It may well win this race to Bill. Well, we talked a minute ago about Steve Park's crew taking some rubber out of the right rear spring. This is what they look like. That's a spring rubber. That's half of one right there. A whole one would look like a donut. Now, you're familiar with what a coil spring looks like. These go in between the coils, and the crews can adjust the spring rate, the travel of the suspension with this rubber. Now, they had a tight condition in that car, so they took out half this rubber. That will allow the right rear of the car to compress a little bit more in the turns. They think it'll help the car to steer better. Thanks, Bill. Long pit stop for Sterling Marlin, and Dick Trickle has taken his Joe Bessie-owned car to the garage area. Well, we started off with this fellow at lap 18 getting into Scott Pruitt. That was the first of five incidents this afternoon. Let's show you if you joined us late. There's Park and leader Scott Pruitt, or he had been the leader, had just been passed for the lead, and Pruitt ended up in the fence, but he's made repairs, and Pruitt continues 14 laps down. Stacy Compton in turn two. Took a hard bounce off the wall. He's made repairs. He's 53 laps back. Bill Elliott, Jeff Gordon, along with Johnny Benson, Elliott's car climbs up on Gordon. And then Johnny Benson getting a little loose there after contact with John Andretti. Both of those cars heavily damaged. Benson has climbed out of his. Five big crashes at 150 laps and here's Bill Elliott they he said he was going to go out and ride around a bit well all that hammering has uh, come to good they fitted a new radiator inside his Ford and Elliott is back on track Ralph oh sorry excuse me Ned he knows he has no chance to win the race but he's out there running laps to try to gain points of course he has to gain position for it gain points now let's go around Thank you, Ned. I was just checking down here with Brad Peart, who's a tire specialist for Dale Jarrett. I said, what is those two tire stop going to do for you? Didn't take him long to give me the answer. Went right to his notebook here, this white notebook right here, turned to last year's race here, showed me that exactly at lap 146, Mike, they did this very same thing last year and got 63 laps as we go back to green. Ward Burton in the 22 trying to get back on the lead lap against Dale Jarrett. Rusty Wallace battling. That's for the lead. Yeah, Rusty Wallace pulls even as they come off turn two and down the back straightaway. Looks like uh, the two car has the advantage right now. DJ doesn't like that outside. Look, you see everybody fight for that bottom groove coming off turn four. Third place there, number 17, Matt Kenseth. What a great job. Rookie in this division, running in third place at this racetrack. That's an accomplishment. He's really doing well. Now, Ward Burton won't, won't stay out there too. Well, he will if he can do it comfortably as DJ tries to go back on the inside of Rusty Wallace. But Ward Burton knows that there's a good chance that could be a caution on these restarts because the car's running so close together. So he's going to stay out there for several laps. But if Keep he gets the hold of up. The bang in the back there. <laughs> that's okay, that's Mike Gross, that's one exactly of the starters. Uh, excuse me, spotters, one of the yep. spotters. Well, he spots for Ward Burton. That's exactly what he was talking about there. Yep. Beating and banging back there, and that could cause a caution. And, of course, they'd be back on the lead lap. He is technically on the lead lap right now. Now, Mike's from Long Island, and you've heard Ward. Ward's from Virginia. How do they communicate? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty well, it seems. Oh, it seems that way, yes. Dale Earnhardt Jr. just made a pass on Bobby Labonte as they come down the front straightaway. Ricky Rudd there. He's already a lap down right now, but uh, I will tell you one thing. These guys are going at it. Earnhardt Jr. moves up to fourth. 
And the fella ahead of him now is the man he's battling for Rookie of the Year honors, Matt Kenseth. Earnhardt Jr. has led three races this year, all on mile and a half racetracks, Las Vegas, Atlanta, and here at Texas. He's just very, very aggressive, and this racetrack applies itself well to guys that run the corners extremely hard. Earnhardt Jr. on a mission right now. Dale Jarrett is your 14th leader of this race. There's Earnhardt. Oh, skating oh, a bit. Oh, boy, I tell you what, he better not be any more aggressive than that right there. That was almost a caution. Caution is out. Caution is out, and Ward Burton's going to race back to the flag. That strategy they played there is going to work. Dale Jarrett lifts out of the throttle. Here comes Chad Little back to the flag, trying to get back on the lead lap, and Jarrett could be in trouble because Rusty Wallace has just gone by. Well, he slowed down to let his teammate Ricky Rudd oh. get back on the lead lap. And uh, Rusty took advantage of that situation. Now, normally they don't race back to the flag, and Rusty might uh, even fall back behind with DJ, although he did get to the start finish line first. The caution was not for Dale Earnhardt Jr., it was for debris on the racetrack. Uh -huh. And it is the sixth caution of the day coming at lap 156. There was debris up in turn three. Some of that beaten uh, banging, no doubt. So at 156 laps, we're closing in on halfway in the DirecTV 500 at Texas Motor Speedway. Rusty Wallace and Dale Jarrett up front. Well, Dale Jarrett slowed up coming to the caution flag to allow his Robert Yates Racing teammate Ricky Rudd to get back on the lead lap. And uh, so let's go down to Jarrett's pit. Here's Ralph. Todd Parrott is the crew chief for Dale Jarrett, and your driver slowed down a little bit to help out his teammate, but you sounded like you weren't a little happy about that. How come? Well, I just, we'd look real funny if we got hit from behind. You know, one of them guys didn't know he was going to slow down, you know. The 28 car got his one help for the day. Now they got to get his car right. That's it, Mike. You know, sometimes when you try to help out your teammate, it can be very dangerous. And when you're leading, Dick, well, you don't want to take any chances. You don't, Tony Urey and his team have taken no chances at all today. That car looks like it's on a rail. What's this kid got to do to win this thing, Tony? Well, that's exactly what our driver said. He said this thing's on a rail when he ran off from Bobby there, but uh, we was trying to get him to save it a little bit. Uh, the car's extremely good. Uh, that Budweiser Chevy's been running like that for uh, four or five weeks now. We just had three bad weeks and uh, got behind these points. So we've got to finish this race, get us the top 10, get them points back. And we're at green flag. Rusty Wallace on the point. He passed Jarrett coming to the caution flag. So Dale Jarrett is second. Matt Kenson. The rookie is third. Jarrett for the lead off turn two. Holy Howdy. cow. Did he hit the afterburner or what down the back straightaway there? The 88 car just rocketed by him down the back straightaway. Well, he had the lead under green. Got it back under green. Earnhardt Jr. on the outside there on Matt Kenseth trying to make a move Good job, there. Nice and smooth now. Now, a couple of other cars benefited also got their left back. We mentioned Ward Burton did. So did Robert Presley. He got the left back. And there was one other car. Oh, uh, uh, Ricky Rudd, of course. Michael Waltrip, perhaps? Or maybe perhaps yeah. he was still on the lead line. Well, Robert Presley was the other yeah. one. Earnhardt Jr. now has third place to itself. He got by Matt Kenseth just a second ago. He is really flying in that red car, the fourth car on the screen right there. For the record, this is Earnhardt Jr.'s 12th Winston Cup start. His dad, seven-time Winston Cup champ Dale Earnhardt, scored his first win back at Bristol, Tennessee in his 16th career start. Dave Blaney there, he's a lap down. He's just in position as they restarted there in the 93, but uh, Earnhardt Jr.'s car looks to be handling just like he wants it to in the third spot. Let's ride with Blaney. Looking ahead at the two leaders, the Fords of Jarrett and Wallace. You'll see to the left, here comes Earnhardt Jr. passing the lapped car of Blaney. Well, he went a little bit high coming off the turn, opened up the groove there for Earnhardt Jr., and he took advantage of it. Now, Blaney's a graduate of the World of Outlaws as well. As uh, we heard from Danny Wasoski earlier. And Blaney, a very successful driver in this series. Looking back at him, though, as the tires start to wear off, he's starting to run higher and losing more spots. Here's the 10th place battle, Kevin LePage, 16. Here comes Tony Stewart. 
Tony the Tiger, you're riding with him in the orange car as they head down in the corner, right on the white line. You see the 16 of Kevin LePage washing up the racetrack there. Dick Trickle's back on the speedway after spending some time in the garage at Joe Bessie Chevrolet. Here's Earnhardt. He's in uh, 18th place, about to overhaul Jimmy Spencer on the outside, the hard way. Oh, yeah, he likes it that way. <laughs> So Earnhardt has already won a race this year. Up to 16th and now works around the lapped car of Rick Mask driving for A.J. Foyt. 32 is Scott Pruitt and 45 Adam Petty. I'd say Earnhardt's a little bit on the nippy side right now. He just had a penalty that brought him into the pits and put him in the back of the field. So he is really on a mission right now. Now Adam's father Kyle Petty has been uh, helping out in the pit kind of spotting and coaching for Adam. But we just saw him run to the garage area. The word is he's going to put his suit on and hop into the Wood Brothers Ford. Okay, he used to drive for them. Yeah. So uh, he's very familiar with the team. Of course, we heard earlier that Elliot Sadler. Got sore left That's arm for so Sadler after that crash, so he's out of the car. Yeah. Which proves one thing <clears throat> we are a big family and we'll help other teams out. Uh, one thing you can count on. We'll fight on the racetrack, but we have a, a heart when it comes to the other teams also. Coming, Coming up, up to complete halfway. About to say the same thing, Mike. Look at Jeff Burton, seventh place. 30 positions from where he started. He and Tony Stewart both took provisional spots. And keep an eye on Dale Earnhardt Jr. now. He's moving in on the two there. Rusty Wallace, they head down the back straightaway. He definitely has a very, very quick car. We said that over and over again, but it's amazing to watch what he's doing with this car. He likes this track. Got his first Bush NASCAR Series Grand National win right here. Boy, did he loosen up Rusty by moving up that close to him. He does that a couple of times. Rusty will uh, say, you know, third isn't that bad. <laughs> for the moment. And we have Trouble. caution. No. Turn four, a car up in the wall. In turn four, that is Gary Bradbury. I don't think we'll have any cars racing back, racing the leader back to the line this time. There are none that are no, they've all close slowed to up. The, yeah, none of them are close to the leader. So here comes Jarrett at a somewhat leisurely pace back to the caution flag. There's a gentleman's agreement among the drivers about not racing back to the caution flag unless you're trying to get a lap back from the leader and no one was close enough to contend. So let's make this the seventh caution of the day at lap 169. Track crew is going to Gary Bradbury's aid. And to clean up in the garage area already there have been seven cars make that eight cars either behind the wall lengthy stays on pit road or out of the race in the garage due to crash damage. Uh, not quite the average for this race which is nine but then we're just halfway. <laughs> wow. Well this is a car getter if you get in trouble here you really smack the wall pretty hard. Bradbury is OK. The uh, Larry Hedrick Chevrolet is not. There's Bradbury after a slide around and into the wall. And it looks like as he slides around the track, the leaders are now heading into the pits. First to Dick Bergeron. Tony Uri Jr. Uh, going to be up on the front tires now as Earnhardt Jr. comes down pit road driving the same car he matched his career best finish ever in. 10th in Las Vegas in this race car. Let's see if they're going to pull a four tire stop or a two tire stop. Last stop they did was 16 seconds. Windshield comes off in front of it. They got a little piece of plastic that they just hauled off. Another four tire stop for Junior. Meanwhile, Bobby Labonte has gone out of the pit. He's finished his service as his Park, as his Skinner, as his the 99 of Burton. Oh boy, Junior's got his work to cut out for him now. To Ralph. Well, that's a four tire stop for Dale Jarrett. They did exactly what they had with the car before. They just changed tires. That's all they did to it. They like the way this car is handling right now. Jarrett with two runner up finishes here in Texas in the first year and in 99 he finished 11th here in 98. Bill Stevens. Rusty Wallace came in got four tires no chassis adjustment. 
and two stalls down Matt Kenseth is still in the pits. He was going to come in and just take two tires. They changed their mind. They're taking four and as you can see there's a NASCAR official in front of the car. A tire from that team got loose and crossed pit road. They're holding him up. Also a lengthy stop there. Dale Earnhardt has been in for a very long stop. They took a long time on the right side of the car. Now they're under caution so they have the luxury of taking time. It's not going to cost him an additional position. But how about Matt Kenseth? Is it yeah. going to cost him a lap? He's still being how? held. And let's show you what happened. Up oh, there goes the tire. And that's going to cost him at least a lap. Oh, yep. That is too bad. Yeah, it is such a great run going here today. Now they'll they'll stop him right there and let everybody go by, and he'll be at the tail end of the line, a lap down. And it wasn't Matt's fault. No. Happened in the pits. All right, 171 laps are complete here in Texas. We're under caution, but we'll be right back. This CBS Sports Race Summer is sponsored by Havilland. Add more life to your car. After 171 of 334 laps, 256 and a half miles, we've had 15 different leaders. The lead is swapped 21 times. Cautions the story, seven of them. These are the drivers who have crashed out of this 500. Nadu from Connecticut, Sadler, Virginia, Andretti, Benson, Bradbury, all victims of this mile and a half track. And would you believe that a car that was a lap down just a few moments ago is now the leader? There he is, Ricky Rudd. And with more on the story, here's Mike Joy. Rudd is at the front after the uh, pit stops that were made under this caution flag. Jeremy Mayfield there is in second. Bobby Labonte is the third place car. Two Fords leading a Pontiac. There's Labonte's number 18. Steve Park, number one in a Chevrolet, is fourth. 31. There is uh, Mike Skinner, the fifth place car. And Rudd is on point. And this is another situation, Mike, where a lot of the teams chose to just put on two tires while others took on four tires. So they're they're learning that that uh, works. Let's go to Dick Bergen. Well, there's one team that took on no tires, Ned. Ward Burton currently running in seventh spot. Remember a few laps back, he was a lap down. Got his lap back on one of those caution flags. Came in this time around, took no tires at all, just fuel. Put him up in the front of the group in seventh spot. Earnhardt Jr., meanwhile, took four, and he asked his crew, he said, how many of those guys in front of me took two or none? And they said, well, about all of them. So Earnhardt <laughs> just calmly said, We'll take them one at a time every lap. The, Mike? The Burton brothers are sixth and seventh. Robert Presley is eighth. Jimmy Spencer is ninth. Dale Jarrett, tenth. This man, Dale Earnhardt Jr., is eleventh. Also on the lead lap, Rusty Wallace, Mark Martin, Kevin LePage, Tony Stewart, Joe Nemechek, Terry Labonte, Chad Little, Michael Waltrip, Dale Earnhardt, twentieth, Jeff Gordon, Kenny Ready. Irwin, and Bobby Hamilton. Ready. All right, man. Get up on that steering wheel. Go, go, go. Green, 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 green. 174 laps complete. We're back under green. Don't you just love it? Get up on that steering wheel. How that many was... times have I ever heard that? <laughs> wow. And Matt Kenseth, as we see the action back in the pack, might have a shot at getting back on the lead lap. He lost a lap. He was penalized a lap when his crew let a tire get loose and roll across pit road. Yeah, he's much quicker right now than Ricky Rudd. I think he will get by him as they come off the corner. He pulls even as they come down the front straightaway. Not quite. Let's get an update from Bill Stevens. Mike, an update on Matt Kenseth. Now, we saw the tire get loose and cross pit road. A NASCAR official just came over to Robbie Reiser, the crew chief, and said, Robbie, I've been telling you all Trouble. day. Turn two, Tony Stewart. Excuse me, Bill, but he got way, way up the racetrack. Almost hit the wall, but hung on to it. He's dropped to the back of the pack. Let's go back to Bill. As I said, Mike, the problem with the number 17 car today has been Matt has been too far outside of the pit stall. He's been too close to the action coming by on the right side. The NASCAR official said, I've got to hold you up this time and tell Matt he's got to bring that car closer in when he brings it into the pits. So that then was the penalty for uh, pitting outside the box. All those pit stalls are marked, and if you're over the line, it can result in an infraction and a resultant penalty. So here's Kenseth trying to get back on the lead lap 
Ricky Rudd trying to hold him at bay because he knows that's one of the faster cars here. I can tell you one thing, Ricky Rudd is not holding him up right now. Ricky Rudd's got his car dialed in pretty good. Two tires are working for these guys. Matt Kenseth is a little bit quicker, but Rudd, Ricky Rudd's pretty tough to, to handle when he's able to turn down on the bottom side of the racetrack. Bobby Labonte is back in third. and Mayfield. Now here's Kenseth having a look to the inside. No, not this time. Jeremy taking the inside look in the 12 car there, trying to look on the inside of Matt Kenseth. He has a good race car now, and that car is ticking a little bit better than Matt Kenseth. So that's certainly going to hurt Kenseth's chances of getting back on the lead lap. Now he's got two cars to pass. Yeah, well, I think he's got a shot his foot up right now, it looks like, because he's moving backwards. So Ricky Rudd leads it. Jeremy Mayfield, both in Fords, Labonte's Pontiac, Steve Barton's Chevrolet. Let's show you what happened there to Tony Stewart up in between turns one and two. That's way up on the outside. The orange car. Right well, here. he got loose there and had to chase the car up the hill. And it didn't get better as he got up there. He got loose again. He was very fortunate to get slowed down enough that he didn't get into the wall once he got up into the new stuff. Well, I interrupted Bill because I saw all that smoke from the right rear. Thought he might have cut down the tire. Talking about moving back, Ricky Rudd now is falling out of contention there. He's moved over there. About four or five cars got by him in one corner there. Rudd was the 15th different driver to lead this race. Now Jeremy Mayfield goes up front, and he will be the 16th different leader. Meanwhile, Bobby Labonte in third car there, the green car, is just so consistent. He's up front all day long. Don't make a lot of noise, but he's very consistent. And he, we all know he is lightning fast when it counts. He's very patient, too. The record for this race, 19 different leaders except the first year, 1997. Steve Park ahead of Ricky Rudd, but Jeff Burton has passed Steve Park, and Burton is about to join Bobby Labonte. There's Burton, the right side of your screen, the number 99 Ford. Here's Michael Waltrip in our wrenchhead.com telemetry. Michael in 18th place. He's on the lead lap. See how those RPMs go up on the straightaway, 84, 86, 87, eight. <laughs> jump up to 9,000 right before you let off. I'd have to say that was probably a little bit of wheel spin there, because he was not anywhere close to 9,000 to that point. Big pack here as Ward Burton tries Inside. to break free. Of traffic, Kevin LePage, 16, pulls up alongside. Inside. This is for ninth place on back with Robert Presley. In ninth, LePage now 10th. Wallace and Burton fighting for 11th. And Ward Burton in that yellow oh. black car right there, he still does not have the handle under that car. He's not able to keep up. You see him washing Inside up the race now, track, losing valuable position now. now. Of course, as uh, was reported, he took on no tires during that last caution. Normally, new fresh tires will run faster longer. Speaking of which, look at the three car of Dale Earnhardt now. He is really flying up through this crowd. They made him mad a little while ago, I think, Mike. He's up to 13th place chasing Rusty Wallace. Now, Ricky Rudd was the leader on this restart. Rudd has fallen back to fifth place. Dick Bergren, problems? Well, that's when I asked his crew chief, Michael McSwain. He looked at me and said just one word, tires. They didn't take any tires on that last pit stop. That's how he got the lead, and the car just doesn't handle that well now. Ralph? Bobby Labonte's number 18 has been tight off of the corners right now, so he is battling that problem, which means as he comes off the corner, he's having a hard time getting that car to turn the front end and make it a good run down the straightaway. Mike? John Andretti, after crash damage from Johnny Benson, back into the race. His 200th career start will not be a memorable one. He's in 40th place right now. But 
Their two old warriors going at it. Wallace and Earnhardt. How many times have we seen that two and three car battle? Here they are going at it again. That's for the 11th position. Make that 10th position now. As, get, as Rusty gets by Robert Presley. You know, it hadn't been that long ago that the two car of Rusty Wallace was leading this race. So when you get back and lose uh, track position, it's tough to get back to the front. Now Presley is suffering the same fate as Ricky Rudd, not enough tires. That's why he's dropped those three positions. But Robert Presley was up there in the midst of the lead lap. It's been a competitive race here at Texas Motor Speedway. We're just past halfway. We've had seven caution flags, six of them for crashes. The biggest one at lap 111, Bill Elliott, Jeff Gordon, Johnny Benson, and Jerry Nadeau were involved in that one in turn number two. And this race has had 15 different, make that 16 different leaders, from pole sitter Terry Labonte down through Jeremy Mayfield, who's in command right now, ahead of Bobby Labonte, Jeff Burton, Steve Park, and Ricky Rudd, the top five as we watch the battle for 10th place there. Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt. Those two drivers are running about uh, eight and a quarter seconds behind the leader. Here comes Earnhardt looking to the inside. Here he goes. I'll guarantee you he'll go down in that corner much harder than most people. Earnhardt takes the spot. And following him through, Joe Nemechek. So move Earnhardt up to 10th and Nemechek up into 11th place. And here comes Jeff Burton. This is for second place underneath Bobby Labonte. Jeff Burton has passed a lot of race cars today. He started, took a provisional back in 37th position, came to the front, then uh, had an extended pit stop during a caution period, got back in the back again, came back up toward the front, now in second place. Jeff Burton. Who won the inaugural has passed all but one. He trails Jeremy Mayfield with 191 laps completed. Welcome back to Texas. Kid has funny ears. Oh. He's listening on the <laughs> scanner, listening to his favorite driver and crew chief and spotter communicate. Might be Jeremy Mayfield. He's got the lead from Jeff Burton, but Burton's closed up. That lead car by Roger Penske and Michael Kranifus, the former worldwide head of racing for Ford Motor Company, now an NASCAR team owner with Penske. Teammate to Rusty Wallace. Mayfield out front, but Jeff Burton has just inhaled him. Yes, it's a matter of time. Burton looked to the outside, inside in that corner, and both places he gained on Jeremy. Now, whether he's content to ride along and take care of the car at this point in the race, we'll have to wait and see, but he is the fastest car. Burton with a look to the low side and Mayfield slips up the racetrack a bit. We may have our 17th different leader here. Not uh, this time, maybe. We definitely have a race there side by side, but now you see the 99 of Jeff Burton take the lead down in turn one. So Jeff Burton's Roush Racing Ford comes to the front. It's Ford, Ford, Pontiac, and Chevrolet. Now in the front four. Burton did lead lap 84 earlier during green flag pit stop, so we're still on 16 different leaders. Dave Blaney making a green flag pit stop. You know, for all the crashing, the attrition has not been high. The only car officially out of the race is Jerry Nadeau. He's being penalized. Apparently, came down pit road too fast. The Dave Blaney car that you mentioned made a pit stop there a moment ago. And when Jeff Burton gets that 99 Ford, good. And he is tough. He is very, very tough. But just behind them, back there, just in the distance, he's just gaining just a little bit every lap. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is every bit as fast as anyone out there. You're right. He's cutting a little bit of a little bit of the lead time off that uh, he has. He's about four and six tenths seconds behind as we look at this battle for second. One more lead change will tie the record for Texas for this race. 
24. We've had 23 today. We'll tie the record for lead changes. Bobby Labonte went by just then and took over second spot. And there's, don't call me Earnhardt Sr., there's Dale Earnhardt, 10th place. Right now, and here's Richard Childress Chevrolet. And you just saw him saw the wheel, finding the handling just a bit. Mike, even good race cars, apparently every once in a while, they get a little bit sideways. They are running close to 200 miles an hour when they turn in the corners. Jeff Burton moves past John Andretti. Andretti 44 laps down in 39th place. But if he stays on track seven more laps, he'll pick up three points from Gary Bradbury's wrecked car. I think I'll back it up 10 miles an hour because we do have telemetry. <laughs> <laughs> it's about 190 when they go in the corners. But let me tell you, that's pretty quick on this type of racetrack. It's very fast for a mile and a half track. Two hundred three laps complete. Let's go to Jeff Burton's pit. Here's Bill. Mike Frankie Stoddard is the crew chief for Jeff Burton. He's talking to Jeff right now, but we'll grab him. They have moved all the way up through the field. Boy, the way that he's running today, you were probably wondering when we were going to show up. I'm not really sure what you just said, but uh, what, a, what a job by Jeff Burton. He was really down on himself after qualifying. We, we broke the motor. We didn't give him enough opportunity to get the car right for him. And uh, but he showed everybody today, you know, that he, he just he's a super race car driver. I'm real proud to be able to be associated with him with Exide Batteries, this whole team. We just got a couple more pit stops, and uh, you know, the 18's real good, 12's real good, there's eight cars real good, there's a bunch of them. I think it's been a great race all day, and uh, you know, it'd be nice to pull this thing off in the state of Texas. This morning, I asked Jeff Burton if he was concerned about starting so far back. He said, "Are you kidding? I do my best work from the back." He has shown a lot of times that he can come from the back. Battle for eighth place, Ned. Yes. Teammates tussling. Back scanner in car number 31, Dale Earnhardt in number three, took the position away. Right in front of them is Ricky Rudd in the car number 28. He has dropped back now. And you can see he why. Did. He just can't keep the car down on the racetrack. The 28 there just went right up the racetrack in the middle of the corner. Good straightaway speed, but not much in the corner. That's eighth, ninth, and tenth. Mike Skinner loses a spot there, may gain one from Ricky Rudd. Let's go to Skinner's pit. Well, Mike, these Winston Cup cars are pretty big pieces of machinery, but some fine adjustments will make huge differences with the cars. Crew Chief Larry McReynolds is talking about adjusting the air pressure in Mike Skinner's car by the tenth of a pound. If they, usually they will do so much less, like we'll say two to three pounds, which could be 20 to 25 pounds of spring rate adjusted to the car. But now, Ken Squire, they're talking about just a tenth of a pound, which could be as much as five pounds of spring rate adjustment. Ken? See that number 33, Nemechek? He's about to be challenged. And I'll tell you, the strongest one out there is Tony Stewart. In back-to-back -back laps, he passed Terry Labonte. Then he passed Mark Martin. Six laps later, he took Rusty Wallace. Here he is closing in on these leaders, trying to crack the top ten. Tony Stewart's coming on strong. Back to Mike Joy. Stewart charge number 20 there on the move at 12th place behind Nemechek and Skinner and just in front of Rusty Wallace and Mark Martin. Seems that most every driver who has led this race has cycled through the field, either because of taking two tires or four tires. And the number of caution flags today, seven, have really provided some jumbling in the running order. We're at 209 laps. Jeff Burton is the leader in a Ford. Bobby Labonte's Pontiac, Jeremy Mayfield's Ford in third. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and his teammate Steve Park in Chevrolet's. Welcome back to CBS Sports coverage of the Direct TV 500 from Texas. Mike Joy with Ned Jarrett and Buddy Baker. Our leaders, Jeff Burton, but Bobby Labonte remains just about eight tenths of a second behind. Dale Earnhardt Jr. now up for third ahead of Jeremy Mayfield. Back to fourth, Steve Park is fifth, Kevin LePage is sixth, seventh is Dale Jarrett, eighth is Dale Earnhardt, and here's the ninth place battle. Now, Joe Nemechek in 33 and Tony Stewart's 20, a lap ago, sped past number 28, Ricky Rudd. So they are on the move, currently ninth and tenth.
Stewart gets a run. Let's see if he's going to be able to make the pass. That's where I always like for my car to handle the most, right down that straightaway. <laughs> you see that 20 car just pull up on Nemechek and blow by him down that back straightaway. Let's give you a reading on Joe Nemechek. Our wrenchhead.com telemetry, a little bit of break, hit 191 miles an hour. They're going into turn one. And if we stay on this to turn three, you'll see the turn one entrance because of this curved front straightaway. Might be just a little faster than the entrance into turn three. Hit 188 nice. miles an hour there. Right. Yeah, you would think more racetrack, more speed. Now he touched the brake a little bit getting off the corner, buddy. I don't understand that. He just let his foot rest on it and is setting that light off. He's well, certainly not trying to break. Yeah, he probably didn't realize no. that, he, that he was uh, pressing on the brake. Leader in traffic, Jeff Gordon. Boy, Texas is still not his racetrack. He got had gone a lap down earlier, Mike, and then made a pit stop here just a few laps ago. So he's uh, pretty far down the list now. In fact, he's being shown three laps down in 31st position. Most of the damaged cars from the six accidents have gotten themselves back on track. Jerry Nadu officially out. A lot of damage to Johnny Benson's car. He climbed out. Adam Petty hit it behind the wall. Oh. Just all of a sudden he was running back there in about the uh, 28th or 9th position, somewhere back there around 30th, but uh, heads for the garage. He was hoping to run all day just to get experience. But as you say, that's one thing he did get today, and, and that's what he was out here for. He actually got some good race time out here, and he knows what the cars feel like at midway of the race. Petty completed about 216 laps before going to the garage. That 19-year-old has a lot of promise and a lot of opportunity, but also a lot of responsibility to carry the most famous name in stock car racing to another generation. I think he'll fit in that mold just right. I think so too. At lap 220, here's your leader. South Boston, Virginia's Jeff Burton. And Dale Earnhardt started 35th to win Atlanta. Burton started 37th today. There's Kenny Wallace battling, trying to stay on the lead lap. Brent Bodine just ahead of him. He's used the combination of a fast race car and good pit strategy. And uh, he's putting right out front. Brett Bodine in car number 11, right in front of him. To go another lap down. Red is currently being shown in the 25th position. And Brett, one of the very few driver owners left in Winston Cup racing. I think he and Bill Elliott among the teams that contend every week. You'd have to count Kyle Petty in there. Petty Enterprises is a family operation as well. Well, Jeff Burton just did get by Brett Bodine then. Brett cut down, did not realize the leader was there, and then was almost a wreck going into turn one just then. There's Darrell Waltrip on his victory tour this year, his last season, car number 66. And this is his last appearance in Texas. Ned, let's add to that list Dave Marcus, who attempted but uh, did not make the show here in Texas as one of the driver owners in this series. It is certainly a dying breed. <laughs> I was just thinking about what Waltrip said the other day. Okay. He said, if I don't win a race this year, well, I'll just quit. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of retiring? Yeah. Okay. Ricky Rudd coming into the pits. He was one of those that took on no tires during that last caution period, and he dropped back a little bit in the field, but now headed down pit road. You can see he's had some damage on the right front with his Ford. <laughs> Well, he'll he'll get, the brakes. Yeah. He'll get tires now, but it'll be costly. It'll be at least a lap. Nick Bergman? It was worth a try, though, Mike. He really had to do something in order to get himself back in position. He has spent a lot of time on the road here, straightening out front end damage on this car. The nose of it looks pretty good. And he showed his stuff. He showed he's quick. And he's back on the speedway. Stop. To Bill Stevens. I'm with Adam Petty. First of all, Adam, what brought you into the garage? Ah, we broke a motor. Uh, that's what happens. Uh, <laughs> that's just my luck. Last night I had a car capable of fishing in the top five, and somebody blew up in front of me, and I got in their wreck. And today we was just riding along, running about 24th, and uh, and blew a motor. So uh, 
that happens. We'll come back at Charlotte. At least I didn't tear it up. I learned a lot, um, and I just figured out, you know, what my line was and how I, and, and get, get back in my rhythm and everything like that. So uh, I hope I earned some of those guys' respect out there today. I had a good time, and uh, we'll go get them next week. When you got the name Petty, it's easy to get that respect. Well, I asked his father, Kyle, why start Adam at the car eating us racetrack in NASCAR to make your first debut? And Kyle says, well, you remember, I started at Daytona. He said, Adam's run well here. He's qualified up front here in the Bush car and had a good finish in uh, in a truck. And Adam likes this racetrack. So he gave a good account of himself today. Sorry to see his day end early. 227 laps complete. The Direct TV 500 continues on CBS after this message and a word from your local station. Welcome back to Texas 231 laps complete pit stops continue. This is Michael Waltrip Jeremy Mayfield and his teammate Rusty Wallace are both in as well. These would be scheduled pit stops. Those that need adjustments would be coming in first as Michael Waltrip goes out first to this group but he came in before they did so. All those cars were on the lead lap. And Ned, this is where the great pit crews come in when they stop under green. Anybody can have a good stop under caution but when you stop under green. One second is almost a football field here. Big battle of Steve Park and Tony Stewart share the same piece of racetrack. Dale Earnhardt works by on the outside. Now Earnhardt and Stewart have been drafting together and they caught Steve Park who was battling Dale Jarrett. Now here's Tony squeezing past Michael Waltrip. Steve Park rolled out of the gas and just let Tony Stewart go right on by. You don't see Jarrett because he's come on to pit road along with Matt Kenseth, Kenny Irwin, Robert Presley, and Ken Schrader. Dick Crickles in the pits as well. Get right in here. Get her straight. Stop on the side. And here's your race leader coming in, Jeff Burton. And the second place man, Bobby Labati. Bill Stevens. The Excite crew over the wall. This is what they call their 17 seconds at the office. Half a second for each lug nut, two and a half seconds a wheel. They'll do four tires, two cans of fuel. The left side of the car is up so far, no snags whatsoever. Car is down and away. Excellent pit stop for the leader. Not so. For Ralph Shaheen. Jeff Chandler and Barry Cook go to work changing the tires on the left side now of Bobby Labonte's machine. This will be just a four tire stop. No adjustments to the car. A 15.04 second stop. An absolutely fantastic stop by the 18 team. A good stop but a bad result for Dale Jarrett. He was held in his pit for coming down pit road faster than the NASCAR mandated speed limit. Well he was he was penalized about what he, his pit stop was. 15.09 was his pit stop and he lost 15 seconds as a result of that. Let's go back to the pits. Dick. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is on pit road right now. Stalled the car briefly. He is asked to tighten it up just a tad. When they put new tires on it, it's going to be another four-tire stop. A little trouble in the right rear. Randy Cox trouble getting it up. There they go. 17-5. That's the slowest stop of the day for Jr. Kenny Wallace, Mark Martin, Tony Stewart, Steve Park, Joe Nemechek are also in. There's Mark Martin pulling away. New paint job on his car for the Texas race. Kevin LePage become trouble turn two one car in the wall hard it's Jeff Fuller and there's going to be a lot of cars that are going to be caught a lap down here as a couple of cars had not pitted Kevin LePage and Chad Little had not pitted I'm not sure if LePage has received the caution flag or if he came past the flag stand before the wreck happened but the uh, rookie the former modified champion from Auburn Mass Jeff Fuller and the Eel River Racing Pontiac a hard hit in turn two. It's the eighth caution of the day coming at lap 238. Boy, both ends of that car are used up. Fuller had a great qualifying run. He was one of the two rookies in the top 10 in qualifying. Scott Pruitt was the other, and you can see that he is okay. Uh -oh. Well, having a look at the damage. Can we fix it? Tough job. Jeff is okay. Let's show you what happened in turn two. Up there by himself. And the back end just goes out from under him and hits hard into the outside retaining wall. 
There's he slides on around down across the racetrack. Cars going by. Ned, you would think maybe a tire went flat, but you could see the right side tires on that car were up. The left side, of course, are down, but he hit the wall hard enough to make those uh, lose the air. Eighth caution of the day. Jeff Fuller, the latest victim of Texas Motor Speedway. He's okay. Car is junk. We'll be right back. Two hundred thirty nine of the three hundred thirty four laps complete three hundred fifty eight and a half miles. Sixteen leaders working toward that record of 19 25 lead changes eight cautions as this track continues to devour the NATO Benson Bradbury Compton Adam Petty lost an engine fuller just crashing hard up here in turn number two. This track can really bite him. Well let's get back with more of the story from top side. Here's Mike Joy. Join CBS Sports tomorrow night beginning at 9 p.m. Eastern as we bring you the ultimate shining moment live coverage of the NCAA men's championship between Florida and Michigan State. It all starts with prelude to a championship presented by Honda. That's at 9 p.m. Eastern right here on CBS. Well things have really shaken up right now and it's good to be Jack Roush. Two of his cars had not made pit stops under green and they are at the front of the field. Here's Ralph. Well, it's fantastic to be Pat Trice and crew chief for Kevin LePage because right now, Pat, you guys are sitting in an enviable position. Explain to me how the advantage has worked out for you and what you're going to do to try to get to the finish now. We've been getting good fuel mileage all day. Jack does a great job working on that for us. And uh, Family Click Forward's been running really strong all day. We're running in the top five. We were, we're still running real good times. We could go a few laps. Guys come in a little bit early. We decided to stay out because last time, caution come out right after everybody pitted, so you never know. And uh, finally, a break went. Went one, one our way this time, and hopefully it'll work out, stay green the rest of the day, and hopefully we'll be there in victory lane, we hope. Dick, they're at the back end of the line, but they're actually at the front of the field. They're only going to need one more pit stop in that 16 where they're planning on taking just two tires, Dick. Well, good news, bad news for Chad Little. Indeed, he has got a lap on most of the field by doing what he just did. But in order to accomplish that, he had to speed down pit road. Jeff Hammond said, no question, just stand on it. He came flying through here. NASCAR penalized him for it. As a result, Chad Little has got to go to the end of the longest line. He will be in second spot, but the end of the longest line. Now, as a result of all of that, they have decided bring the car in right before the green flag, put some fuel in it. Wow, wild, wild day for Chad Little. Well, it, let's try to explain how the leaders of the race are last in line. They did not make pit stops under the green. So when the caution came out, they had nearly a lap on the field. All of these cars that you see here that are on the lead lap came into the pit. So the cars that were out there got a free pass all the way around. See now, here's the pace car in front of that pack. These two lead cars come all the way around, so they will line up in the back. But they are the two leaders. The cars ahead of them are technically behind the pace car, so they're on the tail end of the lead lap, and there's a long list of them. There's at least 13 of them in that position. They'll all have to race very hard to stay in front of LePage and Little to keep from going one lap down. That's exactly right. They were one lap down when the caution came out as a result of Chad, uh, Chad Little and Kevin LePage not uh, having made a green flag pit stop. Everybody else had, and so now we get one more lap to go, but you're right. They're going to have to race hard, and uh, Kevin LePage is right on the back bumper of the 22 car aboard Burton. Dale Jarrett is right in front of uh, Burton, and then Mark Martin and Rusty Wallace, Nima Check. So, yeah, those are the drivers that are, are really going to have to race hard here. Ned, let's get an update from Ralph on uh, Elliott Sadler, the driver who was injured in that crash with Sterling Marlin back at lap 119. And Mike, fortunately, it's a positive update. Elliott is okay. He has a bad bruise to the left shoulder, and the x-rays were negative. That was the big concern. They were afraid something was broken in there. It's just a bad bruise to the left shoulder. He's going to be fine. Kyle Petty is currently behind the wheel in the number 21. Bill Stevens? Well, there's been some minor deal-making going on down here in the 99 pit of Jeff Burton in the Exide car. They've been in touch with the number 18 car, Bobby Labonte, the interstate car. On the restart, they're hoping to hook up together and try to run toward the front. Exide batteries and interstate batteries working together. What a country. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ford versus Pontiac, Roush versus Gibbs. 
Now they should be in good shape. They're out. They've had yep. fast race cars all day, and, and they're out in front, out front here, and has a lot of traffic, a lot of race cars between them and the leader of the race. Green flag. You heard Dale Jarrett and Todd Parrott in conversation. Okay, there was some shuffling around on the back stretch over there, and, and DJ said he got back to where he was, so I don't know what the. Oh, Earnhardt. Earnhardt up high, and they are streaming past him. Here's Earnhardt Jr. alongside the 99, Jeff Burton. Jr.'s going to move up, but there's trouble with the three car. He got caught be, way yeah, up yeah. high. I wonder if he has a tire that's uh, down or what. Ned, it might have been that he got shuffled so far up the racetrack, he got a lot of that rubber debris on his tires and uh, had to work it loose before the car would stick. Could be. Okay, now we're being told that, that the 88 car has been posted because he passed on the left. Okay, no, that was that has been taken away. They were talking about that, but I guess when he said he got back in his position, then I guess they let it go. So, so the leaders are mid-pack. Well, there's Jarrett battling with Steve Park. And well back in this pack are the race leaders, Kevin LePage and Chad Little. And that is a big disadvantage because the cars up front up there in clean air and there. Ooh, trouble. 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 He got hit by the four car going into turn one. Caution flag. Where are the leaders? More cars spin. LePage right. to bring them around to the flag. Now he will let off. And all of these cars in front of him will come back on the lead lap and be able to catch up to LePage and Chad Little because the pace car will not pick up the front cars in the pack. It will wait for the official race leader, Kevin LePage. Exactly. And there's DJ's car sitting down on the inside of oh, the race car. He's moving around inside the car, you can see. I'm not sure that he hit anything real hard. He spun up to the outside of the track the and then back down across the track. It was the 28. He said he's sorry. Oh, 28. I, I thought saw DJ going into the turn on the outside of the four, and I thought they got uh, got together, not not anything to Bobby Hamilton. All tires flat. Well, let's have a look at it, Ned. Yeah, we'll know exactly then. Okay, see, there's DJ on the outside of the four car, and still Ooh. think they got together. I'm not sure Ricky Rudd touched him. I don't. I don't think so. No, either. it didn't look. Not like from it. that angle, it, it wasn't apparent. Here's another look. Well, it's already happened before, before that camera's kicked in. See, there is some damage to the left side. Everybody else was able to miss him. Ned, he brushed it, though. It was not, yeah. as you said, that well. It's a t anytime you hit it 190 miles an hour is tough, but. Well, the 90 car also spun there. They had barrier. Let's see what Mike Skinner saw of this. Okay. Did they touch? Look at those, the black and the red and blue car. And the yellow car. <laughs> yes, they did. Hard to say. Looked like he touched just getting in the corner there. Now Dale Jarrett will climb out and they'll hook the wrecker up to the number 88. Boy, what a difference from a year ago when everything, the brakes went their way and they went on to the championship. This year they're having things happen that didn't happen last year. And it'll be the first time that Jarrett has finished out of the top dozen here at Texas. Well, this will put the field back in order behind the pace car with LePage and then Chad Little, and then the rest of the pack will be behind them. No, he, he declined getting on that stretcher. He said, I'm going to walk to the ambulance there. Looks like he's limping a little bit, maybe favoring his right knee. But it did, didn't look like he hit anything hard there, too. And I'm, I'm surprised that he wasn't able to crank it up and drive it back. Not sure, Ned. Of course, when you go into that corner at 170 some miles an hour, any kind of a hit is pretty hard. But we'll check on uh, the condition of that car and Dale Jarrett when we come back to Texas after this. We're under caution for Dale Jarrett's accident. You see the tires flat spotted and damage to the 88. Off it goes to the garage. 249 laps complete. We're under yellow. Racing Electronics provides the communications to a lot of the race teams and scanners to the fans and our in-car radios. 
Let's try to get a word here with Kevin LePage. Kevin, Mike Joy at CBS. Things are looking pretty good. Well, Mike, uh, my hat's off to all the guys in the pit road there, Pat Trison and everybody. They're doing a great job getting this family click board running very well today. What did you think when you're leading the race behind all those other cars right in front of you, trying to have to bust your way through them to put them a lap down, though? Well, I was kind of hoping the thing would stay green, because if it did, we had a pretty good car, and those guys have to make up a mile and a half. But, uh, hey, we'll see what we can do. We're going to do the best job we can, and uh, we'll see what happens at the end of this race. Okay, one lap to go. We'll let you get back to work. Let's show you from Ricky Rudd's car what happened down there in turn one. Just had touch. touch right there. Yep. And the four car did touch it. That's when when DJ was turned into him. Right. So certainly didn't want to imply that Bobby Hamilton did anything wrong, and he didn't. So now we're back to well, if anything's normal here at Texas, this would be it. There are 17 cars going to line up in the outside lane on the lead lap. So the leader, Kevin LePage, is out front. Bobby Labonte is second. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Burton, Jeremy Mayfield, Tony Stewart. Steve Park, Rusty Wallace, Mike Skinner, and Joe Nemechek, 10th. Then Chad Little, Terry Labonte, Ricky Rudd, Dale Earnhardt, Mark Martin, Ward Burton, and Jimmy Spencer. Those are the lead lap cars. Ken Squire. How do you tell if you have a racer living in your neighborhood? Well, Kevin LePage says as you drive by a house in July, the grass is over 14 inches high. That's where the racer lives. We're too busy to mess with lawnmowers. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to complete lap 251 of 334. Ready. 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 Green, 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 green. That's Robert Presley racing back into turn one, trying to get back on the lead lap. He's done it once today. For the moment, he's done it again. Here's Matt Kenseth right with him. Kenseth lost his lap when he was penalized for Whoa. pitting out of the box on pit it's, road. It's got to get crowded going down in the corner. Matt Kenseth is on the inside. You see Bobby Lobotti now pulling even with Kevin LePage as they start off turn four. And this is for money. Bobby Lobotti for the race lead gets it. He's got Earnhardt Jr. right up his tailpipe. Riding with second place car, Dale Earnhardt Jr. as they head for the back straightaway. Well, they'll have to pull back on the reins on Earnhardt Jr. right now because he's got a <laughs> very, very fast race car. So does Bobby Labonte. So right now, it's just a might. It's going to be the battle of wills. Riding with Earnhardt Jr. And here's Tony Stewart. He's on the move. Going to dip inside Bobby Hamilton and try to take fifth away from Mayfield. Not that time. Mayfield went on the outside of Hamilton. There's Steve Park in car number one. And trouble. Turn four. One car around and sliding down. It is Joe Nemechek. And spinning to the infield is Rick Mast off turn four. And caution is out for the tenth time today. Rick Mast back underway there. He just went across the grass. Now he's back going. You know, the complexion of this race is like the weather in New England, as Mark Twain said. If you don't like it, just wait a minute, because it's all going to change. Wow. It has changed a number of times already here today. You see Nemechek moving around in there. Robert Presley and Matt Kenseth were ahead of leader Bobby Labonte, and they have both come to the caution flag and gotten back on the lead lap. As Joe Nemechek climbs out. He's okay, but the concrete here in Texas has bit another one. Got his first win in NASCAR Winston Cup competition last year at New Hampshire. <laughs> He's not real happy right now. You can see him just kind of... Leave me alone. Let me look just for a second. But it's mandatory. He goes in and gets a check over from the doctors here. Tenth caution of the afternoon. Joe Nemechek with Rick Mast also involved. We'll be right back with you here at Texas after this. 
Joe Nemechek is the latest victim of Texas Motor Speedway. Bringing out the 10th caution flag at lap 254. 90 laps to go. And let's show you from Ricky Rudd. Riding along behind Mark Martin. And you see the smoke up ahead. And Mark slowed down. Ricky tapped him just a little bit, but uh, they got through there okay as Rick Mast on the left there spun out down through the inside. Fritos takes you inside racing. We've had a number of cars get loose and get up and hit the wall. It's easy to spot a car that's loose. Watch the back of the car trying to go to the outside there. You, if you ever see one get that far sideways, <laughs> that's more than loose. It's a wreck. Taping up a little bit of damage. Now, this was from one of the much earlier collisions that Ricky Rudd got a small piece of very early in the day. We've had 10 caution flags, nine of them for crash incidents. 77 laps to go, and this one is far from over. There are 18 cars on the lead lap. And there's probably, oh, 16 of those that can still win this. Dale Jarrett is out of this race. Bill Stevens. Dale Jarrett right here, the reigning Winston Cup champion. Dale, first of all, physically, how are you? Uh, I'm going to be okay. Just hit my right knee on the steering column, but uh, I'll be okay. We're trying to determine from the replay if there was contact before the spin. What happened? I, you saw the replay. I didn't. I don't know. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, I just know when I got into one, car started wiggling. Uh, if that was from a touch or if that was just from the tires, I'm not sure. He's disappointed, obviously. Dick Bergeron? Virtually nobody pitted on that caution flag. Here's why. Bobby Labonte keyed his radio and talked to his crew chief, Jimmy Baycar. He said, you thinking what I'm thinking? Baycar said, yeah. Track position. Bobby said, yeah, and they stayed out, and everybody else thought that was such a good idea. They stayed out, too. <laughs> the only guys who pitted were the guys who were lapped down or way, way, way in the back. Mike? Jimmy Spencer and Robert Presley were those guys way, way in the back uh, who did make pit stops under this caution flag. They were toward the tail end of the lead lap anyway, so gave little or nothing up by making a stop. You're exactly right. I'd take four tires if I was at the back because you can only go forward with that kind of advantage. It really helps the cars to have fresh rubber. In fact, Robert Presley had just gotten his lap back, so he was all the way back. Bill Stevens. With Joe Nemechek, Joe, physically you're okay, but uh, not a happy guy. No. It's probably as pissed as I've been in a long time. You know, <laughs> you, you come here to these tracks and you race hard. You know, we had a good car running in the top ten. And lap cars just won't give you a break. And uh, they want to race you down in the corner and pinch you down on the apron. And that's what happened to me. I mean, I just hit my left sides on the apron and started wiggling and couldn't save it. Uh, just very unfortunate. People got to start using their heads a little bit. Obviously entitled to be frustrated. He was out of the bush race yesterday. Had an accident in that run. And it's a Texas size temper flare up there. There's several of those today. Tough day for Joe Nemechek. Bobby Labonte is your race leader as we go back to green. Dale Earnhardt Jr. right in his tire tracks. Tighten your seat belts, I'll guarantee you it's gonna get a little more exciting now. You're getting down to when it counts to make these moves on people. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has had a great car all day long. First forward in line, Kevin LePage in third. Here's the fifth place battle. Jeremy Mayfield, number 12, Tony Stewart, and then Steve Park, Rusty Wallace, Mike Skinner. You got each of the three brands represented up front. A Pontiac leading us. Chevrolet in second. It looks like a Chevrolet is about to go to first, and then a Ford in third, and the Chevrolet of Earnhardt Jr. does go to first. Labonte sees a big gap behind him, lifts the throttle, and drops in line. And Kevin LePage has really turned it up in the 16 there in the third spot. I think the longer Kevin's car goes on a run, the better it gets, or at least I've observed him several times today. And uh, he's just had enough left on these tires now that it might be able to challenge them. These three have opened up quite a lead on the rest of the field. There's the front three and there's the gap. Jeff Burton in fourth place. Jeff Burton, he, he does have a great race car though. If he catches up to this bunch, don't count him out at all. Jeff Gordon makes a pit stop. He's been kind of like the lonesome cowboy today. A lot of duct tape, a lot of repairs after Bill Elliott landed on his hood in the incident of lap 111. There's Burton, the fourth place car right side of your screen. Now he's trying to close in, but he's got a long way to go. 
1.7 seconds behind the leader and about nine tenths of a second off the third place car. So let's go back and get the battle for seven. Steve Park, number one. Number two there, Rusty Wallace. 31, Mike Skinner. You're with Skinner. Brett Burdine in the 11 on the very bottom of the racetrack, and I, I would imagine that Skinner right now would like to be down there where that lap car is to really get acceleration off the corner, but he seems to be handling quite well. That battle for seventh place on back. Good run for Steve Park today. Got caught up with Scott Pruitt at lap 18 early on in the race as they fight it up front, but Mark spent a lot of time in the top 10 and even the top five this afternoon. He has been uh, certainly in the top 10 all day long. This could be it for Jeff Gordon. He's back on pit road after just making a stop. Like and a yep, left turn garage. Track owner Bruton Smith would love to have a second Winston Cup race here at Texas. I don't think Jeff Gordon would be a fan of that. This has been an awful racetrack for him. Boy, I'm telling you, three times out of four times here, he's had trouble. This man, he loves it. He won his first Bush Grand National race here, and now pulling away from Bobby Labati could win his first Winston Cup race. A disappearing view of you and my rear view. Well, I think he's going to see a rising car in the background there. I think the 99 car, Jeff Burton, He's running very, very well. He's a little ways back, but he seems to be closing in on second and third. Well, he's 2.6 seconds behind the leader right now. I agree. I think he is closing in on second and third. We'll see how he stacks up against Earnhardt as they run a few laps. Well, I can tell you one thing. He's not going to be easy to pass Earnhardt because I can remember the first race that I ever won in Western Cup, and you're not going to give it up easy. Well, Jeff Burton was talking about him there a moment ago. He lost a tenth of a second that last lap, so Earnhardt is pulling away from everybody. And as we noted, Jeff Gordon uh, did pull into the garage area and out of the race. Battle for ninth place, Terry Labonte, the defending champion of this race. And here are the teammates side by side again. Are these two cars welded together today, Earnhardt yeah. and Skinner? They've raced each other pretty hard. You said they race like brothers, and they've certainly been together all day. Earnhardt moves into 10th spot. There's Gordon. Not sure what the record is for a rookie driver how early to win in the season. I recall Ron Bouchard won at Talladega in I think his 11th start back in 1981. Well, I think that was in July. Look at the forward bike that Jeff Burton just got off the corner there. He gets up his eye, cuts on the page, and goes right on by. Goes right on by. But you, you said in the season or in his rookie in his, season? In, yeah, his, in his rookie, rookie season. season. Yeah. Okay. Well, it certainly wasn't me. I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Dale Earnhardt won in his 16th start. That was at Bristol, Tennessee in 79. So Burton having passed LePage for third place and moving away from Kevin LePage at about two tenths of a second a lap. But Bobby Labonte looks like he's turned it up and he looks like he's closing in a little bit on Earnhardt to me. From Bobby Labonte, you'll see him, uh, well, he passed Jeff Gordon coming out of the pits. Gordon has put on a new set of tires and decided to try it once more. We thought he was putting here on the truck there a moment ago. Well, it was funny, Ned. He pulled yeah. into the garage, and then he pulled back up toward pit road, and then they backed him up, and then they put tires on and hmm. sent him back in the race. Gordon came into this race 10th in the point standing and continues to soldier around here, running fast enough, but he is in 30th place, 13 laps down. Battle for fifth place, Jeremy Mayfield. And Tony Stewart. Tony Stewart's much quicker getting in the corner than Jerry. Jeremy Mayfield is. Stewart's moved up well since this last restart. At one time, he was a lap down. 
I was sure it was. Oh, we got a smoker on the back straightaway. Could be Michael Walker, if I'm not sure. Michael nope. was really smoking earlier. No, that's not him. Ed it? Barrier. Ed Barrier. Michael. Driving for Junie Donlevy out of Richmond, Virginia. Caution is out. Make that number 11 for the afternoon. And this should be their last pit stop. They should be able to go the rest of the way on a tank of fuel. Now, what's a good pit crew worth now, Ned? Well, it's worth a lot. So Barrier will coast to the garage for Don Levy. And this should, once pit road is open, bring everyone in. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is your leader. Bobby Labonte is second. Jeff Burton is third. That's a Chevy, a Pontiac, and a Ford. Kevin LePage, Jeremy Mayfield, and then Tony Stewart. Steve Park, Rusty Wallace, Terry Labonte, and Dale Earnhardt are your top ten. Also on the lead lap, Skinner, Kenseth, Martin, Ward Burton, Little, Rudd, Spencer, and Presley. And we have broken the record for most caution flags in this race. Anyone surprised? No, you hate to no. see it because no. a lot of great cars and, you know, you hit a wall at 190 miles an hour. It's really good that nobody's been injured, but yes. a lot of cars have been torn up too. One tough racetrack. Earnhardt Jr. is just about to overhaul the pace car to get to pit lane here. Now only the cars on the lead laps, 18 cars on the lead lap, are allowed to pit the first time by. Let's first go to Bill Stevens. Jeff Burton is in in the number 99. They're going to put a half a pound of more air pressure into the right rear tire to loosen that car up a little bit. This will be a four tire stop. This will be a crucial one. Remember, this team started 37th today and have moved into third place. They're down and away. They'll be happy with that one to Dick Bergeron. Bobby Labonte and his crew chief had talked about taking just two tires, looking for an advantage. They decided not to do it. We're looking at them with the pole cam right now. This is the championship winning crew, 15.9. A good stop for Bobby Labonte. Dale Earnhardt Jr. came in with the lead. Went out in front of Bobby Labonte. Yes. But uh, some other cars that just took on two tires back there, I think, beat them out. That's right. Ralph? 14.7 seconds for Dale Earnhardt Jr. A very strong stop by this team down here. They took four tires and made no adjustments. The one, the two, and the 17 got out ahead of Earnhardt Jr. And here's Dale Earnhardt looking hard at that left side. Now, the last time they were in, they had a very, very long pit stop. And uh, we're told now that they are changing the battery on Earnhardt's car. That's located behind a panel under the left rear wheel well. So he'll come back and be on the lead lap, but Earnhardt will be back in 18th place. The master of Texas for the moment, Dale Earnhardt Jr. You think his crew wasn't happy? They beat Bobby Labonte out of the pits. Yes. <laughs> Don't forget that his first NASCAR Bush Series Grand National win came right here in Texas. Coming up on the back bumper of Joe Nemechek. That's called the bump and run. And into history. We were here and that was a great day. Dale Jr. and his dad and crew celebrate. <laughs> that was then, and this is now. Steve Part, right, Dale Jr.'s teammate, is the race leader. Rusty Wallace is second. Matt Kenseth is third. Ready. Then Ready. Earnhardt Jr., Bobby Labonte, Jeff Burton, Tony Stewart, Kevin LePay, Jeremy Mayfield, and Mark Martin are the top ten on this restart. Fifty-six laps to go. A lot of time for a lot of things to happen. Absolutely. Right now, Matt Kenseth in third place, rookie. Fourth place, Dale Earnhardt Jr., number eight there. He's got to be very patient, which he was there, pass, passing the lap traffic. But now those in front of him are for real. They're the leaders. Moves up on Kenseth. Boy, in a hurry. 
Careful, careful. Ah, he gets under the bottom there and goes right back into it. Bobby Labonte also moves past Matt Kenseth, and here comes Jeff Burton. You know, and that's a classic example of four good tires against two tires. The cars that Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going by right now only took on two tires. Makes a big difference, especially when he had a fast race car already. Yes, that's what makes it look easy. Doesn't mean it is. That's what it looks like. Look how he goes to the outside by Rusty Wallace. Bobby Labonte also on the move on the inside. And here comes Jeff Burton. Putting on four tires is like putting on Superman's cape. Oh, you got it. The next victim is right in front of him, Steve Park in the number one car. His teammate, Earnhardt's teammate, came up, come out of the same garage in Mooresville, North Carolina. Park, runner-up for a NASCAR Modified Championship by the smallest margin in series history. Then a Bush Grand National driver and now in Winston Cup for Dale Earnhardt. Identical cars except for one thing, left side tires right now. Well, Steve Park is not showing any favoritism to the boss's son. Uh, but I don't think he can hold him off as they come down the front straightaway side by side. Earnhardt Jr. back to the lead. And do we have to tell you the crowd's making a lot of fuss when he made that pass? <laughs> I could hear him over the cars. The fans. Matt Kenseth passing Rusty Wallace. That's back at fifth place. And here is the 16 car of Kevin LePage as well. Coming up trying to make the pass. Didn't quite pull it off because Kenseth hadn't made it work yet. Well, LePage started on the outside pole and he's had a great day here in Texas. Bobby Labonte takes over second. And here comes Jeff Burton. Watch a forward bite off the corner here of Jeff Burton. He'll just motor right on by. Steve Park giving it a game try, but that car a little loose off the corner. And he surrenders the position. So there's Dale Earnhardt Jr. leading him across. Now he has an advantage now of a full second over Bobby Labonte. Let's go to his pit. Tony Yuri Sr. is Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s crew chief. Tony, those four got him to the front. What do you got to do to keep him there to get that first win? Well, we got to stay in front for 50 more laps. <laughs> uh, but while the car's real good, it's uh, been good on four tires all day long. We wasn't going to mess that up. Uh, Goodyear brought a great tire here, and you can put two on and get away with it for about a half a run, but you couldn't make that whole run, I don't think. So we put on four every time. Hopefully we get more wider. The only thing you can predict here in Texas is the race will be unpredictable. They've run it three times, and this in its fourth year could give us a second first-time winner. Jeff Burton scored his first-ever Winston Cup win here in the inaugural in 1997. And Earnhardt is pulling away, Mike. He's almost to 1.3 seconds ahead of Bobby Labonte now. Car looks flawless in the corner, able to hold it right on the white line on the bottom part of the racetrack. See Bobby Labonte, that's your interval from first to second right there. Bobby Labonte about a half a turn back now. Riding, Riding with the a, wind. This daylight ahead of us, racetrack. Doesn't spend much time out of that throttle, does he? Well, he made it all count when he really needed the grip. He was out of the throttle, and when he got back in, the car was already set really good to get a good run up out of the corner. He didn't overdrive the corner. Sterling Marlin's car being pushed into the garage area. He will join Ed Barrier, Joe Nemechek, Jeff Fuller, Adam Petty, Gary Bradbury, Johnny Benson, and Jerry Nadeau as the car is out of the race. Picked up another tenth that lap, 1.4 seconds <laughs> between Earnhardt Jr. and Bobby Labonte. He just hopes. Oh, oh Matt Kenseth. I oh, hard in the wall. Started to say that Earnhardt just hopes there's not a caution flag, but here will be one. And everybody's going to get past as Kenseth slams the inside wall. And once again, 
For the 11th time today, caution is out for an accident. It's the 12th caution overall at lap 290. And turn four once again is Calamity Corner. The car hit very, very hard on the driver's side then. Matt Kenseth, runner up last night to Mark Martin in the long delayed Albertsons 300. He's a very talented young man as well. He was leading the rookie points coming into this race. And they're getting the window nets open, and the uh, fire crew always wants to get that hood up to have a look inside to make sure that there's no broken oil or fuel lines or chance of a fire. There's Matt. With his hat on already. Learned that trick from Jeff Green, no doubt. And Dale Jarrett comes back into the race. 45 laps back. Let's show you what happened to Matt Kenseth. Okay, he's going into the turn, buddy, all by all right, himself. You could see it wiggle just a little bit getting in there. Now it turned around. Watch it hit on the left side of that race car. Very hard in the wall. Now here's where he was lucky. Everybody goes by without contact. Two hundred ninety laps complete. Forty four laps to go. Still a lot can happen here in Texas. Two hundred ninety two laps complete. Forty two to go. Mike Joy with Buddy Baker and Ned Jarrett. It's been mechanical mayhem. Ten of the twelve cautions here have been for concrete punchers. 10 big accidents accounting for 10 of the 12 yellows. Now tonight on CBS, Queen Reina of Jordan and guitar god Eric Clapton, followed by a powerful all-new Touched by an Angel, and then Chuck Norris stars in the action-packed world premiere movie, The President's Man. That's tonight on CBS. And Chuck Norris, an interested onlooker today, was Ward Burton's man earlier in this week. Ward's seven-year-old son, Jeb, got to meet the action star, and boy, was he thrilled. He was, and Chuck was uh, seated next door in suite here to us uh, at the beginning of this race. So he's, he loves auto racing. Dale Earnhardt Jr. continues to lead this race now over Bobby Labonte and Jeff Burton. Here's Ralph. Mike, the gentleman on the left here with his arms folded, that's B. Hoover on Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s team. He is one of the uh, chassis special setup guys for Dale Earnhardt Jr., and there's a reason why it's so special. You see, the team found out that B weighs exactly the same as Dale Earnhardt Jr. So basically, whenever Earnhardt Jr. eats, B. Hoover eats. And whenever <laughs> no. Earnhardt Jr. eats, B. Hoover eats. And believe it or not, the team gives him a lot of ribbing about it. Hey, Chuck Norris has a stand-in. Why not Dale Earnhardt Jr.? <laughs> yeah, sure. Or would he be a sit-in for hopping in that car so they can scale it? No. Who knows? <laughs> Go B. Hoover. Huh? There's the leader. Got an arm out the window to get a little bit of cool air, and there's plenty of that to be had here in Texas. It is a very cool, unspring-like day. 17 cars still on the lead lap. And five of those took four tires during this caution flag. Terry Labonte, Mark Martin, Dale Earnhardt, Robert Presley, and Chad Little. So they may be a bit quicker than the cars who did not stop. You're exactly right, Mike. That may be bigger than we even think it is. Let's get out of the pits of the second place car and Dick Berger. Well, Bobby Labonte and his crew chief, Jimmy Maycar, have had conversation and they are in agreement. They would like to see a long green flag run. They think that's their best shot to catch that number eight of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Why not? Earnhardt Jr. has incredibly fast pit stops and he seems to be quick right out of the box on new tires. Mike? Saw a bit of smoke from Michael Waltrip's car as he came down and uh, got ready for this restart. That must be an oil tanker. That thing's been doing this for a long, long time. I don't know what he, how much oil he's got in it, but there's plenty. Yeah, he has been smoking for quite a while. In fact, when we had a, a caution a while back for Ed Barrier, I thought it could be Michael Waltrip because his car had been smoking, but he's been hanging in there, although he's a few laps down, but still hanging in there. He's uh, being shown in the 22nd position, two laps down. There are only two cars a lap down, Bobby Hamilton and Kenny Irwin. As Ned pointed out, 17 cars on the lead lap. If Earnhardt Jr. wins today, 
he and his dad will become the first father son combination to visit victory lane in the same season since 1988 Bobby and Davey Allison. That would be some great company to, to absolutely be in. I think in the same thing. That was the last year that Bobby Allison raced. That's when he had his uh, big injury in Pennsylvania. We're going green flag racing. Bobby Hamilton in the four there, trying to make up a lap right now. He's not going to get it done, but he is fighting as hard as he can. And the two GM cars got the jump on Jeff Burton's Ford. There's Earnhardt and Labonte. They've taken off and they have Hamilton as a lap down car cushion to Burton. Now what Labonte's trying to do right now is stay as close to the back of that car of Earnhardt as he can. If he can stay right up, he might make him a little bit loose and uncomfortable. That's his best chance maybe to pass him, buddy, if he could do that. But Earnhardt begins to pull away a little bit now. Got just a call length and a half away. That's not much, but maybe enough that it won't loosen him up. You got to be right up under it before he can do that, and that's exactly what Bobby Labonte was trying to do. You're riding with the Circuit City camera on board Bobby Labonte. And, and he's that, not wasting a lot of time out of the throttle either as he no. goes through the corner, just kind of feather footed through it. Listen. Back in it and gone. And coming in his rear view mirror is Jeff Burton. That third place car has now cleared Bobby Hamilton and is about to join this fight for the lead. Yeah, he is definitely gaining on Bobby Labonte. You see, he's uh, right now, the last lap is three quarters of a second behind the leader. Fifth place battle, Steve Park and that number one, Kevin LePage. They both had a great run today. Dan Mayfield. Kevin goes Clear. in there very Clear. hard. Here comes Jeremy Mayfield. Steve Park is caught on the outside and does not have the grip to stay there. And remember, he only took two tires way back there. A little surprising maybe that he didn't come in this last caution. Didn't want to give up that track position, I guess, but uh, he was losing some positions, but I guess he figured he could hold on and do better. Ned, let's pick up on the cars that took four tires on that caution. Number five, Terry Labonte, and number three, Dale Earnhardt, have climbed up now to 11th and 12th. Trying to march toward the front and see if those four fresh tires will be of advantage. Last week at Bristol, Tennessee, which is a very difficult track to pass on, Terry Labonte came in with about 17 or 18 laps to go on that track, took new tires, and came all the way from 17th up to 5th position. So work there. See how it works here. Work for Johnny Benson. Got him a second-place finish. Those sure four did. tires on the last stop. But he did that all day. It was his game plan. These guys made a great move there, I think. Tony Stewart battling Steve Park for seven. See, Steve, just, he don't get the run off the corner the cars that uh, took on tires they're getting right now. Well, I mentioned a moment ago that Burton was three quarters of a second behind Earnhardt. Right now, it's 1.15 <laughs> seconds. So Earnhardt pulling away, even though Burton was gaining, as we said, on Bobby Labonte. You can see he's, he's up on him, but Earnhardt looking in his rearview mirror and putting the distance. Look, whoa! Look, look at the father back here. Whoa. He hadn't given up anything either. Three wide in the turn three. And Terry Labonte did not give an inch. They don't call him the Iceman for nothing. That's he just good. took it in there three wide. He says, I'm not giving you this spot. That You're surprised me. I thought Terry might back off, but boy, he didn't. I'm proud of him. Well, Ned, the dinner bell's ringing. There's only oh, 32 geez. laps to go. That's exactly right. And he still had not give it up as they're side by side coming off turn two. Riding with Ricky Rudd. Terry got a good run off of that turn from the high side. He's sort of uh, driving in that second group there. Yeah, the car's working yeah. very well. Let but Earnhardt had that little Ooh, he got it. almost Ooh. got in the wall yeah, coming off turn four. Yeah. Earnhardt made that spot then. And, and Ricky Rudd, Rudd might have kicked up a little dust to the infield grass trying to get by as well. Didn't quite make it. He had a run. He was up beside him, but couldn't hold on. Things are getting close at second place. Jeff Burton in the Ford has caught Bobby Labonte. But they still lack 1.5 seconds to Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yeah, Earnhardt Jr.'s gaining about a tenth of a second to lap as Michael Walter takes his car to the garage area. The 
if we watch him go down in turn three, Dale Earnhardt Jr., a guy had the nerve to ask me the other day, is he for real? <laughs> Turn your set up. He you is bet. for real. Well, the Earnhardts are known for April Fool's jokes on the Winston Cup competitors. Earnhardt won his first Winston Cup race on April Fool's weekend 1979. And if you've looked at the calendar, here we are 21 years later. Wow. Same weekend. Hmm. Interesting. You know my hats off to Mark Martin not only for winning last night and extending that great string of Bush Grand National victories but in victory lane he reminded everybody that this was the weekend we lost a great racing champion Alan Kowicki. Kowicki was the defending Winston Cup champ and he perished in a plane crash coming back to Bristol Tennessee from a personal appearance. And he's missed. He is missed. He certainly is. These two cars are basically the same as, as far as speed around the racetrack. It would take a mistake on one or the other for position change because Bobby Labonte is just as fast as uh, Burton is. 27 laps to go. Boy, that's a long time, though, on the racetrack. Anything can happen. Just one time, get out of the groove a little bit, have to check up, and those second and third place cars will be right on your heels. There are your three leaders, and you see the advantage Earnhardt Jr. has 1.6 seconds. While Bobby Labonte has to occupy himself with Jeff Burton. Now, for Labonte, is he now what we call big picture racing? If you've got a second place car, try to run second. Because every that's five points between those two positions. And at the end of the season, boy, they add up. Oh, they certainly do. Yes. He's going to take what he can get from this this race and uh, not you know, once he saw Earnhardt pulling away, he said, hey, I can't catch him. The best thing I do is try to protect second place. That's what Labonte's Pontiac is doing against Burton's Ford. But here goes Jeff with a look on the inside. He got a good run coming off of turn four, but it was not good enough to get on the inside of Labonte. <laughs> we are 25 laps from the finish at Texas. Dale Earnhardt Jr. with a two-second lead, but lots left that can happen. CBS Evening News with John Roberts will follow us on most of these CBS stations. I think that crew's a little nervous. Never, ever have they won a Winston Cup race. Their first year out, and here they are with a chance to win a big race I'm talking about. There's the second place battle. Jeff Burton, what a day he's had coming from 37th starting position. Remember, he won at New Hampshire from just as far back. 38th, I believe it was, in New Hampshire. Let's get an update on Burton, Bill Stevens. Yeah, to pick up on the point that Buddy made just a few moments ago about the 18 and the 99 being about the same speed, that has not been lost on driver Jeff Burton. He just radioed to crew chief Frank Stoddard. I think I'm going to need some help to get around the 18, but he'll have to pull over and wait for help because those two guys have really opened it up. <laughs> And there's not much help ahead in the form of lap traffic. The top car on your screen is Jeff Gordon. He is running many laps down. Dale Earnhardt Jr. coming up to lap past him on the left of your screen now goes around the outside. I have to believe the TV, the scoring monitor is showing Gordon down 13 laps. Bill Elliott landed on Jeff Gordon's hood in the four car crash at lap 111. They've spent the whole day repairing the damage. This is for second place. You're right, buddy. Those cars are pretty evenly matched. Yeah, it'll take a, a wiggle from the 18 car, Bobby Labonte, and he don't make that many mistakes. If I was having to catch somebody, I'd want to be somebody besides Bobby Labonte, I think. Well, he's got a good run that time coming off of turn two when Labonte went on the outside of Jeff Gordon. Bill, now, right here is where Bobby is really running strong coming off of turn four. A couple of times Jeff has uh, got a run off there too, but this time Bobby Labonte got the good run off there. Maybe a little distance between them. Now Earnhardt's going to be in lap traffic here in just a little bit, and that, that may hold him up. And you have to catch these cars just right and keep that momentum up for those second and third place cars to close right in on him. 20 laps to go. 
Dale Earnhardt Jr. Second in rookie points to Matt Kenseth. Kenseth has crashed out of today's race at lap 290. John Andretti moves aside with his wounded car, as does Bill Elliott. And there's Dad, Dale Earnhardt, catching running Mike, a ninth. Catching Mike Skinner again. again? <laughs> How many times have we seen this today? These two are teammates, and they have been right close together all day long. We're getting down to where it counts for money. Skinner, though, gives Earnhardt plenty of room. And Dale moves up to eight. He's really running away, but Mike, the car, his teammate, car number one is Steve Park. I believe it's been reported that he has smoke coming from Ooh. his car. Yep. And, of course, those engines come from the same shops. Park has fallen to he the is. tail end of the lead lap. He has. He definitely is off the pace as far as where he was earlier second, second place. place black flag is out for Steve Park he'll have to pit Labonte trying to hold on but he's up on the outside and that's not the fast way around here no but he's got to go now he's got to hold it in there he's got a lap car just in front there looks like he oh I don't know don't pull over if you do we have a caution Bill Elliott moves aside now the spotters up on the roof told Elliott you got him coming side by side for second place and Elliott gave room. Bobby Labonte cannot hold him off. He got on the high side there and didn't have the grip to hold him, and uh, Burton just went right on by. Now, both these drivers figure for the Winston Cup Championship. There's Frank Stoddard, not happy. Yeah. Jeff Burton's crew chief. I would say that lap traffic might have had something to do with that when they had to hold back there just a second before that. Burton is eighth in the Winston Cup points. Bobby Labonte is the point leader. They are 185 points apart in the standings, and both figure to be there at season's end. 16 laps to go. Dale Earnhardt Jr., the defending Bush Series champion, Winston Cup rookie, trying to win in only his 11th start. Ralph? And Mike, nobody is doing it for him. It's all Dale Earnhardt Jr. All he is getting over the radio is just split times between him and second place. And where the traffic is, he's doing it all by himself. Nobody's coaching him home. And remember, one other thing, this would also be the first Winston Cup win for crew chief Tony Erie Sr., who's been around NASCAR racing for many years. But you wonder, if Steve Park, apparently he's coming into the pits, he was black flag. As I mentioned earlier, those uh, engines comes out of the same shop. Would they get a little nervous about Earnhardt's? Of you know, we see it all the time that one engine out of a hundred or so might give problems and, and uh, probably no big concern. But. So there is Park, and they'll look at the source of that smoke, see if they can get him back into the race. He's had a great day, but for the bump with Scott Pruitt early on, and the official sends him back out. Of course, they looked underneath the car to see if it was leaking any oil, and, and apparently they didn't see him. They said, okay, go on back out. Now that smoke's coming out the tailpipe, so it's something internal. Robert Presley's day appears to be done. Tonight on CBS, Queen Reina of Jordan and guitar god Eric Clapton on 60 Minutes, followed by an all-new Touched by an Angel and Chuck Norris in the CBS Sunday movie, The President's Man. That's tonight on CBS. 12 laps to go. Terry Labonte moves past Tony Stewart. That is for eighth place, Dick Bergeron. Oh, you were right, Mike. The smoke is coming out of Steve Park's exhaust, both of them. So that's a pretty serious internal problem. The engine was absolutely rattling when he pulled out of pit road here. It'll be a miracle if he makes it to the end. Motor sound just like him running down pit road with the mic. <laughs> it's only got to run 16 more miles and then the warranty's up. Every year since 1994, Winston Cup Racing has had at least one first time winner. Back in 1997, it was Jeff Burton right here in Texas. And we may be 11 laps from it happening again. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has a three second lead. As the laps tick down, 10 to go. You know, we were just talking a second ago about Davey Allison. When you win that first race, you may win many more because you have that confidence. Right now, he has the confidence. When he wins, he may win four or five races this year. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Of course, Tony Stewart had that great season last year as a rookie, won three races. And a lot of people thought, well, Earnhardt might be the 
some guy that could come in and duplicate that kind of an effort. So if he goes on the wins here today, it'll be a giant step towards it. Like most fathers and sons, there's a bit of a generation gap between Earnhardt and Junior. Dale likes to get up early and go work on his ranch at the crack of dawn. <laughs> Junior likes to sleep in till noon, but he'll stay up half the night on the internet. Yeah, or on his drums. He's a drummer. Yes. He loves to go out. He loves to have fun with uh, kids his own age. I mean, you want to talk about an all-American boy? He's in that eight car. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Well, he's played a tattoo on the field here this afternoon. Eight laps to go as he crosses the stripe. There's Kevin LePage on the left of your screen in fifth place. The 12 of Jeremy Mayfield is sixth. He continues to lengthen his lead. He's up to about four seconds now. We are told that uh, Steve Park had a stuck valve in the engine on the restart. Don't know if he over revved it between gears or not but uh, the team feels that will not be of consequence to Dale Junior. His leads up to four seconds. Seven to go. Here's this battle for fifth and it's tightening up between LePage the outside pole sitter and Jeremy Mayfield who finished fifth here last year. Jeremy able to hold that low line right there as they're working by Kenny Irwin Junior as they come off the back to the back straightaway there. They do get closer and closer every lap. It's four seconds, first to second, and a second to third, Bobby Labonte. Rusty Wallace is fourth ahead of this battle. Kevin LePage from Vermont and Kentucky's Mayfield. Stacy Compton being overlapped by Earnhardt Jr. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has had but one top 10 finish this season. Came at Las Vegas where he finished 10th and only two other finishes within the top 20. But with two years in a row where he was Bush Grand National Champion, don't you know all the kids back here that are learning right now in that division are saying, someday I might be like Dale Earnhardt Jr. Well, never mind the finishes. I think the key here, buddy, is that Dale Earnhardt Jr. this year in a Winston Cup car has led at all three mile and a half racetracks. He led at Las Vegas, he led at Atlanta, He's well out in front here with five laps to go. A few years back, I watched him run his first race against his father over in Japan. And I'll tell you what, he led a great deal of that race. So it's not just a mile and a half racetrack. This guy is very, very talented. He has an older brother, Kerry, who also races, and his older sister, Kelly, uh, drove uh, some late model cars for several years. Kelly's beat him before. Kelly was very, very good down in Myrtle Beach where they cut their teeth. Uh, the both of them were great drivers. Four more times around. Four more time trial style laps for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Now two seconds separate second and third. Well, once a Jeff Burton got around Bobby Labonte, he just moved away. Mike, there's something happening in the grandstand. Every person here is standing now. Nobody's sitting anymore. They're standing. Time to count the cash, buddy. You know something special is happening right now. Three laps to go. Well, like father, like son. And you know he knows what's going on. A lot of pride has to be. Well, he's Inside moved up where he can almost see now. He's in seventh place himself. Dale Earnhardt Sr. is. What a day for this great third generation driver from Kannapolis, North Carolina. White flag, last lap for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yeah, don't you know his heart's beating harder than that car is running right now? His grandfather, Ralph. Former national champion, they called him Ironheart because he gave nothing on the racetrack. His father, seven-time Winston Cup champion, once dubbed Ironhead, and then the Intimidator. He and can, how about this kid? He can coast on now, Mike. Checkered flag, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is Texas Motor Speedway's second first-time Winston Cup winner. Jeff Burton is second, Bobby Labonte third, Rusty Wallace leads Kevin LePage and Jeremy Mayfield to the checkered flag. 
You know, there's as much pride in that three car as Dale Earnhardt Sr. goes around this racetrack for what this kid has done right now as a kid himself. And Tony Urey Sr. has been crew chief to both Earnhardt's at different times in their career, including Earnhardt Jr.'s Bush National Championship in the Bush Grand National Series. Let's get his thoughts with Ralph. Tony Urey Sr. has just won his first ever Winston Cup race. Tony, tell me how it feels. <laughs> it ain't hit me yet. <laughs> but uh, that's the way we want to win one. We want to come down here. We want to show these guys that we're capable of doing it. It's not just uh, some Bush team that moved up here. Uh, it's a great, great race team right there, and uh, the guys proved it today. Tell me your feelings about Dale Earnhardt Jr. and what type of driver he is already at this young stage in his career. Well, uh, he's still learning. He, uh, it's hard to keep him slowed down, as I guess everybody's seen today. And uh, when his car's good, he's going to show it. And that's the problem we have. And we get in traffic. We got in trouble. Just like the last three weeks, we've been in. We wrecked three race cars. So uh, that's the only thing we got to do. Just keep him toned down. He's like a wild horse. You just, you, know, you just got to keep him toned down all the time. <laughs> Not surprising, this young Mustang would get his first win right here at Texas. And Mike, he was yelling and jumping and screaming up and down inside the cockpit of the car, yelling and cheering to all his guys as he crossed the finish line. Well, there's Dad who parked his car just outside Victory Lane to come in and join the celebration. Now, he's entitled to go there, not just as the father of the winner, but as the winning car owner. Indeed. Dale you know, Earnhardt Jr. led six times for 106 laps. You know, last night I predicted this was going to happen. I just had a feeling all week long that Dale Earnhardt Jr. was going to win this race. See the crew members from other teams coming out to congratulate him. And Jeff Burton's crew members. What a great day for this ra great racing family. And for the Petties, their fourth generation star, Adam Petty, got his first taste of Winston Cup competition today. Adam will end up 40th, but had a strong race until he came out of it in lap 215. There's the intimidator. And today, <laughs> proud father. See? There is a heart as big as a man. Well, I know how it feels. It's, it's special to see your children do good things. It, it means more many times than it, it always did with me, at least. Uh, means more than something that I ever did. And I expect Dale Earnhardt has uh, some very similar feelings there right now. He ran right up under that red hat, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> well, Ned, you won 50 Winston Cup races, but I remember the emotion in your voice. She described the first time Dale Jarrett won a Winston Cup race up at Michigan. It's, it's so special. It's, it's sometimes hard to put into words. Every dad out there watching and listening knows what we're talking about. I mean, if, you, if your son wins in the Little League or whatever it is, oh, it's special when, when your children do special things. Well, he's in the family business now. <laughs> Dale Earnhardt Jr. is a Winston Cup winner and a Bush Series champion. He's run 190 miles an hour all day. And now, he coasts it into victory lane. And waiting on him, along with Dale Earnhardt, is Ken Squire. His dad is here first. What a moment. The seven-time Winston Cup champion pushing his son's car to a stop in victory lane here at Texas. Hey, fellow, what does it mean to win your first Winston Cup race? That's pretty special. Dale, you seem more emotional than I've seen you in all your victories. Hey, man. Come on. Come on. That's crazy. How about it, Dale? This is as big a moment for you as it is for him, I think. I'll tell you something else. Uh, I knew, he's talking about coming to Texas and winning his first cup race. He won his first bush race here. We knew the kid could do it. Tony, you and all the guys worked really hard. and. Uh, I, I got to thank Budweiser, Chevrolet, and everybody. This kid, he, he worked hard. And Tony, Tony, Jr., Tony Jr., Tony Senior, Richie Gilmore, and all them guys in that engine shop. 
You got a good race car, a good engine, and boy, drove a good race. And it was only your 12th start in Winston Cup. Yeah, <laughs> I'm out of breath. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that was the hardest, hardest race I ever drove. You certainly drove a beautiful one today, and you were pulling away at the finish. Yeah. <laughs> we, <coughs> we had a blue all day long, all week long, and uh, felt pretty good. And uh, once the race started, <laughs> once the race started, we had a good car, and I was pretty happy. You certainly did a beautiful job. Dale Earnhardt Jr. wins his first Winston Cup victory. Let's go to Mike Joy. Like father, like son. Dale Earnhardt Jr. conquers Texas. Ahead of Jeff Burton, Bobby Labonte, Rusty Wallace, and Kevin LePage, the top five. I don't think I've ever seen Dale Earnhardt Sr. that excited. <laughs> no, I, I know. Maybe I when he won the Daytona 500. Maybe. Close. Wow. Six through ten, Jeremy Mayfield, Dale Earnhardt, Terry Labonte, Tony Stewart, and Ricky Rudd. What a day as they tame the asphalt frontier. For Ken Squire, Ned Jarrett, Buddy Baker, Dick Berger, and Ralph Shaheen, and Bill Stevens, I'm Mike Joy saying so long from Texas Motor Speedway, where Dale Earnhardt Jr. has won his first Winston Cup race, the Direct TV Texas 500. This has been he won his first major here. Now Tiger Woods legendary march continues as he pursues a second green jacket. A tradition unlike any other. The Masters on CBS Sports. Chuck Norris is the President's Man. CBS tonight.